Test, test, test. Hey, Blake, we okay on your end, buddy? All right. Uh, if we win, we already kind of know the game time for Tuesday is going to be roughly 1 o'clock. The uh, conference has the seats mapped out. We know which seat we'd be, so that team plays uh, Tuesday. The first game's at, I think, 9 in the morning, and then the second game is the one we'd be in, so it'll be around 12.31. Test one, two. Good. Yep. Sounds good to me. if it has.
much change. Oh, Momo. Who's this guy? It is going to be a much different team next year. Big day at the ballpark, one of the largest senior classes that we can recall. Ten players being honored before the game. And, of course, it's do or die for the Bulls. A win today. They extend their season next week into the conference tournament in Clearwater. If they do not win today, the 2019 season will come to a close. It's the Bulls and Wichita State. Game three of the series. 
Bulls dropped the, for the Thursday night game 7-6. to six, And then on Friday came up with a clutch 2 to nothing win behind a complete game two hitter by Colin Sullivan. So now game three today. Alec Wisely gets the baseball for the Bulls. And Derek, there's no turning back. Just like last night, got to use everybody you need, do everything you can do, because if you don't win, you don't get to play ball anymore. You know, seeing that senior ceremony, which was about 15 minutes, you're not going to find one longer just because of all the names, makes you feel better about the Bulls' chances today because that's a lot of guys that don't want this to be their last day, and one of them is going to take the ball to start things off, Alec Wisely. And you mentioned, you know, this is it, no turning back, use everybody available. What a wonderful percentage now that the Bulls have. You'd think their chances would improve anyway based on the fact that their starter went nine innings last night, so everybody's available. They're doing the ceremonial <laughs> first pitch with family members tossing it to the seniors, and they are close to needing a bigger ballpark for this. <laughs> ten parents and ten players lined up. There's the toss. That, no, they, the ball's all got caught. Yep. That's a good sign right there. Well, senior day is officially concluded, and we'll get down to baseball shortly. A terrific game by the Bulls last night. They didn't come up with big offensive numbers, but Austin Bedrado got the big hit. A two-run single in the fourth. Colin Sullivan made it stand up, and the Bulls certainly have some momentum coming into this game. They also have a much more experienced starting pitcher, so we'll see if the Bulls can use that to their advantage. Also, we've seen that the starting lineup, which we'll get more into later for Wichita, is one less as far as left-handed batters go. They really alternated right-left, literally through the top eight of the lineup uh, the last two nights. And so that bodes well for the matchup as well. It's been shaping up, and you can just see it not only for this series to be the one that's going to decide who goes to the tournament, who doesn't, but also as far as the pitching goes this series, that it would favor the Bulls in the third game. You just hope that they would win one of the first two before we got here. Well, they did. They got, got in last night's game two to nothing to make this game mean something. Now it's one win for the conference tournament. Bulls and Wichita State both eight and 15 in conference play. By the way, we'll keep you up to date on USF softball throughout the afternoon. Their game in Tallahassee is underway. Florida State won USF nothing in the top of the third. Bulls are in the winner's bracket with the Seminoles. The winner of that game doesn't play again today, but the loser has to come back at about 5.30 this afternoon. Stay with us. We'll hear from Billy Mole on this big, big afternoon. The Bulls in Wichita State coming up on the USF Radio Network presented by Marathon. back to the music. <laughs> the blues are blue today. Oh, wow. spreading your wings.
popping the peas today. The umpire is squeezing us or not, but Corrick has walked four in two innings. That's really unusual. I'm sure that uh, she's being very careful because that's a team. Oh, I'm leave, sure, yeah. Anything over and he's yeah. going over. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that's part of it too, but still, that's a lot. Yep. <laughs> yep, grab a little shade. A little bit of a different starting lineup for Wichita State. The Shockers come in 25 and 29, 8 and 15 in the conference. No temporary pitcher as the DH in the lineup today. They will start with Jordan Boyer at shortstop. Luke Ritter, the second baseman, moves up to the two spot. Mason O'Brien at first will bat third, followed by third baseman Paxton Wallace. Brady Slavens, the left fielder, will hit fifth. Ross Kadena, the catcher, batting sixth. Jack Segrist will be the DH today. He'll bat seventh. Center fielder Jacob Katzfe is dropped to the eighth spot. And the first start of the series for David Van Voren. He will be the right fielder, and he will bat ninth. No changes defensively for the Bulls. Chatfield, Phillips, and Bedrado in the outfield from left to right. Jake Sullivan at third, Alex Bello at short, Jordan Santos at second, Joe Ginord at first, Tyler Dietrich catching, and Alec Wisely pitching. And if you want to know how senior laden this Bulls lineup is, Chatfield. 
Phillips, Janord, Wisely, and Dietrich, five of them, all seniors, no matter what happens today, all playing in their final game in this ballpark. Bulls wearing green jerseys, gold trim, white pants, traditional road gray for Wichita State. It is anthem time, and when we come back, we're going to settle this thing once and for all. One of these teams is going to Clearwater, and one isn't. The Bulls and Wichita State coming up on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. Burns is te technically a red shirt junior, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. He can come back. But I think that's it. Well, Wisely, no, Wisely's senior. Yeah. senior. So he's just I think one. he's the only one that, you know, Burns. I don't know what King's option is with an injury year. Two to nothing in Tallahassee. Yeah, another walk and a double. Bright sunshine, we've had great weather for the entire series and we are expecting that to continue today. Nice and warm, of course. Not a lot of breeze, the flag beyond the wall in right field not moving very much. So if you hit one that way, you're gonna have to get it out under your own power. Alec Wisely finishing his warm-up tosses for the Bulls. The full numbers on Alec, three and four. 4.91 ERA making his 15th appearance all starts 69 and two thirds innings 25 walks 52 strikeouts opponents hitting 256 against him he has been a little prone to hitting batters he's hit 12 this year Jordan Boyer will lead it off hitting 325 homers and 36 driven in and the Bulls will shift Moving Santos to the left side of the infield along with Bello and Sullivan. First pitch from Wisely is popped up straight back and out of play 0-1. Right, bright sunshine. Our friends that have traveled down from Wichita have uh, already figured out that an afternoon game, there's no need to sit down in the first few rows of stands. Everybody but one single person is in the shade. And of course, they're hoping to have sort of the same decisions to make next week in Clearwater. I know the team packed for a long week, though. Bulls are hoping to end it though. A one pitch, swung on and missed, actually fouled at the plate. It winds up at the feet of Dietrich, and it's 0-2. We'll see a lot of sliders here today. That's what Wichita's freshman Connery Peters has in his arsenal, it's especially right-handed batters. That's what Weissen's going to toss out a lot. Boy, your right-handed batter is three out of nine so far in the series. No balls, two strikes just underway. Wisely winds and deals, and it's swung on and missed strike three. Boyer retired for out number one. And with senior day, you're going to have naturally a bigger crowd, all of the families, and 
uh, you can hear Wisely's fan group, which is supplemented by everyone else rooting for the green and gold. So we should have a great atmosphere here today. Luke Ritter now had batted in the three spot in games one and two, batting second today. Second baseman at 333 with nine home runs, and Wisely starts him with a fast strike. Ritter is three for eight in the series. Bull still with three on the left side of the infield, expecting Ritter to pull the 0-1. Just off the plate, one and one. Carlos Ray is working the plate today. Scott Johnston at first, Matthew Schaefer at second, Jerry Johnston at third, the same crew that worked games one and two. Here's a line drive into left, but it's gonna hang up and Chatfield makes the catch. Ritter hit it on the nose, but there's two away. We are going to see more shifting in consecutive at bats because you're gonna actually see 9-1-2 with three righties in a row. And the change for Wichita was to drop Catsby down to the number nine spot. Ritter, you know, you wanna jump ahead if you can, but so far so good for the Bulls avoiding that. Mason O'Brien now the first baseman, 282, three homers, 12 driven in. He is one for six in the series. Two outs, bases empty against the left-handed batter. The Bulls a little more traditional defensively. First pitch misses one and oh. They do have Santos edging toward first a little bit, and as soon as I say that, there goes Bello to the other side of the infield. Pitch outside, 2-0. and oh. Yeah, the inning, the fourth inning was everything last night because it's when the Bulls scored the runs and when Sullivan got out of that second and third jam. Remember, because of the shift, O'Brien had his ball caught by Santos, which would not have been caught ordinarily and would have given the Shockers a 2-0 lead. 2-0 pitch, swung on, just got a piece of it, fouled it back, 2-1. He's only using the fastball as a keep, it keep them honest sort of pitch, but he's been keeping them off balance with that off speed. Boy, a tough day so far in Tallahassee. Softball now trailing six to nothing in the third against Florida State. Bulls have gone to the bullpen there. Fly ball left field. Chatfield's fighting it, looking for it, and he makes the catch. He came in, then wound up having to go back and finally near the edge of the warning track made the catch and the inning is over. So Wisely gets a one, two, three inning. We go to the bottom of the first. Wichita State, nothing. The Bulls coming to bat on the USF Radio Network presented by Marathon. Five walks. Wow. Grand slam, huh? Honestly, at this point, if you're Ken, you're thinking, let's just run, roll it. Yeah, play the next one. Yeah. But, you know, they probably got South Carolina again unless Bethune comes up with a big upset. Now oh, it'll be South Carolina. Yeah, you'd think. And South Carolina will no doubt throw its pitcher that couldn't do anything against. Yeah. They beat us here. And yeah. They came in after it was 3 1. It was it's just such a difficult reach to get out. All of them are. Though, you know, I mean, it's just, and, yeah, anyway, you're right. I think back to that one they got out of in 20. Bottom of the first, no score. Here's the Bulls batting order. Kyle Phillips will lead it off, then Jake Sullivan and Jordan Santos. Joe Genord will bat clean up, playing first base, then Chris Chatfield. Julio Cortez is the DH again, batting sixth. Austin Bedrado, who had what turned out to be the game-winning hit, will bat seventh. Tyler Dietrich hitting eighth, and Alex Bello ninth. And they will face right-hander Connery Peters, one and two, 5.17 ERA. He was a relief pitcher almost all season, but joined the starting rotation late. This is his fourth start, 22nd appearance, 38 innings, 22 earned runs, 36 hits, 28 walks, 37 strikeouts. Big, tall right-hander, and his first pitch to Phillips is a strike. Upper 80s fastball. Mentioned the slider. Some he'll, he'll change speeds with that. He'll toss in a slur from time to time. 6'6 freshman from Crowley, Texas. No 
balls, one strike. That's high, one and one. Peters, even though his starts have been limited, he does have a seven-inning performance through seven against UConn on the 4th of May. One ball, one strike. That's high also, two and one. Yeah, the guy that we were anticipating could have been the day three starter, Preston Snavely, you know, still available, but Peters has gotten the game three start these last three conference series, coinciding with, of course, his only three starts of this freshman year. Two balls, one strike. On the outside corner, two and two. Phillips, two of eight in the series. He's knocked in three. He's got 29 RBI on the season. Two balls, two strikes to the Bulls' leadoff man. A little slow roller up the first baseline, gloved, and the throw is in time. Connery Peters with a nice play as he picked that ball up, tossed it underhand, and managed to get it around Phillips. And Phillips is retired one to three for out number one. Showed me some intelligence there as well because he knew that it was going to go foul, but also realized that if he got to the ball, he could go ahead and get the out instead of having to throw another pitch in the event. Jake Sullivan now 3-10, four homers, 21 driven in. Sullivan is one out of nine in the series. There's a little bit of a delay here, I think. Well, they, they threw out the baseball. And it was Peters who didn't want the ball, so they changed it. And I think the Bulls may have taken a little exception to that. Or maybe they think there's something on the ball that's not supposed to be on it. First pitch is low, 1-0. and oh. Well, the home plate umpire, Carlos Ray, was not interested in seeing the ball. He just wanted to get play resumed, but it looked like the Bulls coaching staff, and they're still all looking at that ball in the USF dugout. Looks like they wanted to walk it out to the home plate umpire, and Carlos Ray wasn't having any. Pitch up high, now 2-0. and oh. And Brian Geraldo just now gave up the ball, and actually Billy Moles looking back at it. Something's going on there. Two balls, no strikes. Peters with a long look in, and Sullivan asks for time and steps out. Be funny if that ball makes its way back into the uh, exit of the umpire there. Well, it is a subject of discussion in the dugout. There's a line drive base hit. Jake Sullivan drives it right up the middle, and the Bulls have a base runner with one out here in the first. One thing that has really tied up the Bulls in this series, haven't scored a bunch of runs until the one inning first game when they put in four, but has been the, the change up, the off-speed pitch. But this guy doesn't feature that as much. The freshman, it's really his fourth pitch, and he doesn't throw it very often. So, again, it seems like it might match up pretty well for the Bulls here today. Jordan Santos now 256 on the season, one of seven in the series. Preston Snavely, who was the other candidate to start, is already going down to the bullpen. There's a strike 0-1, and, and a catcher's going with him. So, boy, if you're Connery Peters, how can you not see that? He's faced two men, gotten one of them out, and they're getting the bullpen going. No balls, one strike on Santos. Back to first, and Sullivan is in safely. Could be a team effort from Wichita's point of view. Again, the Bulls have everyone available, but would love to see Wisely go. Six innings at least, even though they have other options. Of course, their closer hasn't pitched this series, so Alvarez will be good for at least two. It adds up well, at least on paper. Sullivan has not stolen a base this season. He's staying put, and the pitch is low, one and one. Three starts. The big one was the win against UConn, because they had dropped the two games to start off that series, and it was in the back end of a doubleheader. They gave him that 5 nothing lead, the Paxton Wallace slam. That was the game where he got a lead. And went seven strong innings, but when it's been tight, he hasn't really come through, has not gotten out of four in the other two starts. One ball, one strike. That's high and outside, two and one. And Snavely's not fooling around down there. I mean, he's getting loose. They're thinking about 
making a change. You can just tell by the urgency down there. Two balls, one strike on Santos. Sullivan at first, one away, scoreless in the bottom of the first. That's high and away, three and one. I think you're right. You mentioned how can you not see that? It's got to be in his head. He's a freshman. Already they're warming up for me. Now Jacob Lindemann, another pitcher, is going down there as well. 3-1. There's a strike, 3-2. and two. So a curious first inning for Wichita State here. Still scoreless. The Bulls have a runner at first. And the count three and two on Jordan Santos. That's outside. Runner was going, but Sullivan will cruise into second after the walk. And the Bulls have two on with one out for Joe Genord. Genord leading the team with 13 homers, 52 driven in. He's hitting 339. He's one for seven in the series. The Bulls. Haven't had a lot of hits in this series other than Tyler Dietrich, who has three, and they all came on Thursday night. No other bull has more than two hits in the series. And we're going to have a meeting on the mound here. I don't think Connery Peters is going to need much hydration this afternoon. Well, you know, it was, a, it was a nice single by Jake Sullivan, but I... I I would not have read it as cause for concern. And we're looking at the radar gun. He's hitting 88 on it, so that's nothing. But, I mean, nothing to be concerned about. But Mike Pelfrey uh, was on his walkie-talkie down there, of course, talking to the bullpen. So they are maybe, you know, listen, there could be something to the whole freshman thing. This is a pressure situation. And, and for Wichita, the pressure is on to make it to the conference tournament. They are a proud program that hasn't been to the NCAA tournament in 10 years. And to not even make the conference tournament, that, that wouldn't go over well. They're going to make the home plate umpire Carlos Ray walk all the way out there, and they're still not going to break up the conversation when Ray gets to the mound. Wow. They're going to stay with the starter, Peters. It's a very warm afternoon between the time he's had out there and now this meeting taking place. i got to believe Snavely is either ready or close to being ready if they go that route. Well, here's Janord now with runners on first and second and one away. Inside, that almost hit him, 1-0. and oh. Snavely, if you're wondering, started 12 games, and his role has just reversed from Peters in right. that he started 12 in a row, and now he's been out of the bullpen the last three. 1-0. Oh. Inside, 2-0. and oh. Snavely actually led the team in games started last year with a dozen, so it's no surprise roll if he comes in right away early. There's a 5.95 ERA and 43 walks in 62 innings, but we get ahead of ourselves because Connery Peters is still the guy <laughs> right now. Two balls, no strikes. 2-0 green light for Janord, and he bounces one past Chris Cates down the third baseline. It'll be 2-1. His get me over pitch is really a slider. You can see that downward action help the pitcher out there. Runners at first and second. Sullivan singled. Santos walked. 2 1 to Janord. Hit sharply on the ground at third. They will go to third to get the force, and that's all they'll get. So Sullivan is forced at third for out number two. Santos moves up. Janord is safe on a fielder's choice. And it'll bring up Chris Chatfield hitting 241, seven home runs. He's two out of eight in the series. Yeah, you mentioned, other than Dietrich, no one with more than two hits, but he and Kyle Phillips, two lefties for the Bulls, obviously, have uh, had a hit in each game. And he stroked a double last night his first time up. So Santos on second and Janord on first with two away. Chatfield left-handed batter against the righty Peters. In the dirt, boy, heck of a block by Ross Kadena. Kept that in front. It's 1-0. Oh. Tremendous. And you mentioned that it's a warm day. 
know it gets warm during the summer in Wichita, but I can't imagine it's gotten this hot out there. And so for the catcher, the third day in a row, to be sharp like that, I'm impressed. You know, both catchers have started all three games for their respective teams. Dietrich for the Bulls, Kadena for the Shockers. 1-0, way outside. Kadena had to stretch out to pull that one down, 2-0. Interesting to see if Jack gets a green light here. It's got to be a fastball in his eyes, I would guess. Two balls, no strikes. Runners on first and second, two away. Scoreless in the bottom of the first. The winner today goes to the conference tournament. Two zero -oh pitch, swung on and missed. Two and one, fastball at eighty eight. Little surprise, Chat took a cut at that one. It was a little bit on the outside corner, but boy, he's had some great at bats. So no question. Final home game for Chatfield, one of the ten seniors. Two one pitch from Peters. Check swing. Pitch was high. They ask at third. No swing, and it's three and one. Did you notice before the, we went on the air, the umpires actually are wearing blue today. Light blue. Got to have the lightest shade you can if you're going to be out there on the game in, the, in these conditions. Three and one. Peters has already walked one, and he has been consistently behind the other men he has faced. Let's see if Chatfield can pick out a good one here ahead in the count. He takes, it's ball four, and the bases are loaded. So two walks, and that is going to be the end of the afternoon for Connery Peters. He does not survive the first inning. Bulls have him loaded with two outs as we go to break on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. Wow. See that coming. Or no, mine's working. Uh, yeah, mine's up today on the stats podcast. Uh, Lucky you, I got nothing. Twenty-three pitches, nine strikes. Two-thirds of one inning for Connery Peters, and now Preston Snavely will come in out of the bullpen. Three and four, a 5.95 ERA, making his 16th appearance, fourth time out of the bullpen, out of the bullpen rather, 62 innings. 57 hits, he's walked 43, struck out 59 opponents hitting 251 against him. And he will inherit a difficult situation here with the bases loaded and two away for the Bulls. I want to correct myself. He didn't lead the team in starts last year, but he still started 10 out of his 11 times. So this is no big deal if they're asking him to pitch a ton of innings. Santos at third, Janord at second, Chatfield at first, Julio Cortez to the plate. Hitting 355. One homer and 15 driven in. Similar fastball. Sometimes drops down three quarters. Also a slider, and that's a pitch that gives Cortez trouble. So they may be thinking that is part of bringing him in here. Well, Cortez had one hit last night. He's one for seven in the series. And up in a pressure situation now. Bases loaded, two away. See if the freshman can come through here. Scoreless in the bottom of the first. First pitch is high, 1-0. Oh. 
I was talking to Coach Mole in off air, so we're before the game, about that walk that Cortez drew that led to the Pedrado big hit. It was, he said, uh, obviously, the big hit was Pedrado, but that was the other at bat of the game. 12 pitch at bat. Six foul balls on two strikes. <laughs> That's amazing. One ball, no strikes. It gets past the catcher, but it caroms right back to the plate. And no chance to advance for Jordan Santos. Give him some credit for being alert as that ball came all the way back right near home plate. It's 2-0. and oh. I want to say it was the first game of the Houston series, but that's how the last out was recorded. So it does happen in favor of uh, both teams. That's not that unusual, the hard wreck uh, carom. Santos would have been a dead duck yeah. at home plate, so a very wise move to stay at third. It's 2-0 and oh on Cortez. Outside 3-0. and oh. So Snavely in danger of walking in a run. I'd say go ahead and take here. Maybe two. <laughs> yeah. Three balls, no strikes. His last two conference starts didn't go well. Gave up seven a pop to Wichita and Houston. Three balls, no strikes. Snavely taking his time, now comes set. Ball four high, it's one to nothing Bulls. Cortez picks up his 16th run batted in, three walks in the inning. And the Bulls break out on top. Well, I mentioned his two of his last three, I should say, went seven innings. And the one that was the one that sealed his fate, Cincinnati scored four off him in the first. The Shockers scored six in the top of the second, seven to four. And he can't get it, the next three guys out. And this is his next action since then. And it hadn't gone well as far as in a key situation. The rest have been out of the bullpen. Here's Austin Bedrado, one for six in the series, but it was a big one, two-run single that won last night's game. That's high, one and oh. Boy, Snavely is not close. Right-hander throwing in the bullpen for the Shockers. They've already been through two pitchers. That last run was charged to the starter, Peters. He's responsible for runners at second and third. Base is loaded, two outs, one to nothing Bulls. It's 1-0 and oh on Bedrado. Inside, 2-0. and oh. You could really see it on that pitch. He hesitated so long before he decided just, well, I got to throw a pitch. He just doesn't have confidence right now. Sometimes it just takes one strike, but you don't know when it's going to come with him right now. Two balls, no strikes, and the Bulls are probably going to make him throw at least one here. Sure. Bases loaded, two outs, a run in for the Bulls. The 2-0 to Pedrado. There's a strike, 2-1. and one. Just about to say, that looked a little bit more confident uh, before he threw the pitch. For whatever reason, sometimes you can tell someone's out of rhythm. He was more in rhythm there. Snavely had missed six in a row until getting that one across, 2-1. and one. Pedrado still got to be selective here, but boy, if he gets one he likes could do some damage. Here is the 2-1. Swung on and fouled straight back. He was on that one, but couldn't straighten it out. 2-2. Two and two. A little bit high in the zone, maybe, but you're right. You like that one. Like what he saw. Janor at third. Chatfield at second. Cortez at first. One to nothing. Bulls in the first. Two balls, two strikes on Austin Bedrado. Snavely at the belt, the pitch. Called strike three, breaking ball. The Bulls leave them loaded, but they do take the lead. One run on one hit, no errors, and three left on base. We head to the second, one to nothing Bulls on the USF Radio Network presented by Marathon. Two 
run homer for FSU. Yeah, might be the best thing. Play five and get ready for yeah. the next one. Bulls fans, when the Bulls win, you win with Papa John's Pizza. This season, get 50% off your regular menu price online order at PapaJohns.com. The day after the Bulls win, use online promo code USFWINS. Papa John's Pizza, the official pizza of USF Athletics. Better ingredients, better pizza, PapaJohns.com. One to nothing, USF. It'll be hitters four, five, and six for Wichita State. Wallace, Slavens, and Kadena. Alec Wisely retired three in a row in the first. Wallace, 257, nine homers, 34 driven in. He's one for seven in the series, but the one was the grand slam on Thursday night. First pitch bounces up there, one and oh, and that hit as much as anything propelled Wichita State to the win in game one and put them up early and the Bulls never did quite get all the way back falling seven to six. Here's a bouncing ball cut off by the third baseman Sullivan. Throw across in time. There's one away. <laughs> nice for Alex Bello to get a practice though. in. Did you see that? He acted like he was fielding the ball and throwing it. That seems to be where Wallace hit a couple of sharp ground balls. Very close to getting two hits last night. That went a lot less on it. Brady Slavens now the left fielder, hitless in the series, 233 on the season, left-handed batter. One out, base is empty, four up and four down so far for Alec Wisely. First pitch high and away, one and oh. So the two pitchers for Wichita State, Peters and Snavely, in that first inning threw 32 pitches and only 12 of them were for strikes. Swung on and missed, one and one. But Snavely got a big strikeout with the bases loaded, so the Bulls only up a single run here in the top of the second. Fortunately, my theory of it just took one strike to get it back in, it proved to be the case. One, one. Swung on and missed on a high fastball, one and two. But the good news is, Indubitably, undoubtedly, the Bulls are into a good spot as far as the opposing pitching goes. They should be able to should be able to rack up enough runs today. One ball, two strikes. Fly ball, center field, not deep. Phillips, couple of steps to his right, makes the catch, and there's two away. That'll bring up the catcher, Ross Kadena, hitting 254 on the season. He is two of eight in the series. I do like that Slavens kid. You can just tell that he is going to be their shortstop next year as Boyer's a senior and was the most coveted recruit in Kansas last year as a senior. Actually, the guy's DH today was a big shortstop in high school last year as well. Two outs, base is empty. Right-handed batter against the righty pitcher, and the first pitch is bounced foul, coming straight back. It's 0-1. Keep an eye out there in the bullpen, but I'm going to guess that Wichita wants as many innings as it can get out of Snavely, uh, unless he just absolutely gets shelled. Yeah, their bullpen is quiet right now. No balls, one strike. Swung on and missed, 0-2. Here's that slider, man. Great pitch against right. He switched off. <laughs> Better get used to seeing it. Wisely has one strikeout. He got Boyer to start the game. 0-2 pitch. Tried to get him to chase. One and two. It is a very still day. Hardly any breeze here. Little soft nubber out toward Janord. He'll take it out of the air, and the inning is over. 
Another one, two, three for Alec Wisely. He's retired six in a row. We go to the bottom of the second one to nothing Bulls on the USF Radio Network presented by Marathon. Still eight to nothing. I lost my box when I lost the internet. Yeah. And we don't have a hit. <laughs> Fourth? Yeah, one out. So much easier to find out their career histories against the Bulls since you only have to go back to last year. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he pitched against us. Because they would have played five times last year, right? right? Three out there, two in the tournament. Yeah, he pitched in the tie and we scored. He walked four against us. <laughs> in Tallahassee, Bulls softball trailing Florida State eight to nothing in the fourth. If that score does not turn around, that would mean the Bulls would play again late afternoon, early evening today, depending on how long other games go. They would play the winner of South Carolina Bethune-Cookman, which barring a monumental upset, would set up a rematch against South Carolina, the team they beat three to two yesterday. It's the beauty of double elimination. You can have a hiccup, but then the tough part is you really have to fight your way through. So South Carolina will be looking for revenge and then you know beat FSU twice in a row. But hey, we'll see what happens. Here's Tyler Dietrich, 223 on the season. He takes a strike. Dietrich is three of six in the series with all three hits coming in game one on Thursday night. Good news is they won't get no hit. Megan Sheehan, freshman, just not the single. All conference honoree, Megan Sheehan, and a very good freshman season for the Bulls. 0 1 pitch, swung on and missed, chased one a little off the plate. It's 0 2. Snavely did pitch against the Bulls in the infamous tie last year up in Wichita and did, you know, uh, pitched an inning, didn't give up a hit, but walked four, and the Bulls scored three on him because of it. No balls, two strikes on Dietrich, leading off the bottom of the second. That's outside, one and two. Fun. Sorry, it's funny. You can look at what the Bulls did against Wichita last year, and it's almost a different offense. It almost doesn't count, although with Sullivan, it turned out to be great because he went a complete game against them last season. Bulls drew three walks in the first, including one with the bases loaded to help them do a one to nothing lead. One two pitch took a little off it and it's rolled out toward third diving effort by the third baseman but it goes off the glove of Wallace and that will most likely be a base hit for Tyler Dietrich. Well it's got to be scored a base hit. Uh, first of all he thanked me for whatever reason on his senior day video and second that's enough of a reason. There you go. Base <laughs> hit for Dietrich second <laughs> hit of the day for USF. And here's Alex Bello, 243. Two homers, eight driven in. Bello is one for six in the series. So Dietrich aboard at first, nobody out. We'll see if Bello can move him along or not here. Squares to bunt, doesn't offer, and the pitch is a strike, 0 and 1. Bulls just got on the board against FSU, so the run rule would be off right now. It's 8-1. to one. Uh, Lindsay Devitt stole back, a couple stolen bases, and a Bethany King ground out scored her. Second day of the NCAA tournament there. Bulls playing in the winner's bracket. Here is a self-defense bunt. They go to third. They get the out on to first, and Bellow beats it there. Fellow picked a really hard pitch to try to bunt. It was right up around his eyes. He kind of bunted it in self-defense. He hit it too hard to the third baseman, Wallace. Wallace was able to throw to second to get the force on Dietrich, and they almost turned the double play on Bello, but he is safe on the fielder's choice at first. Yeah, I can see the thought process there. 
for sure. Bellows punt for a hit several times this year, but you're right, that was a tough one to get down, be able to deaden the ball, and he couldn't do it. Kyle Phillips now grounded out his first time 0 for 1. So now it's Bello at first with one away. And the first pitch is outside to Phillips. You know, if you're the Bulls, you want to continue to be aggressive, but they have gone after a lot of pitches early. And when you would think maybe they would want to put a little pressure on Snavely to throw some strikes. 1 and 0 on Phillips, one out in the inning. This one hit out towards shortstop right into the shift. They step on second, throw to first, double play, inning over. So the Bulls go out quickly. No runs, one hit, no errors, nobody left. We go to the third. It's one to nothing USF on the USF Radio Network presented by Marathon. Eight to one after four. It's actually, uh, okay, a double steal. Devitt stole second. And then she had stolen. Okay. So Devin had single back. Got two hits at least. Same pitcher for FSU or no? Yeah, they brought in a different pitcher after the second inning. Specifically after the top of the third when it was six nothing. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know what? They, they could score against this other pitcher. Be awesome if they made a game out of it. FSU could. You could reinsert a pitcher there, right? We go to winning number three. The Bulls leading Wichita State one to nothing. Jim Lauk, Derek Sharp with you for the last time this season from the ballpark at USF. We hope we will have some more baseball for you next week if the Bulls win this one today. Their first day of competition in Clearwater would be Tuesday. And I believe they'll be the second game of the day which doesn't mean we can give you a start time other than to say it's probably going to be about midday. It'll depend on the length of the first game. That is a four game extravaganza on <laughs> Tuesday. So they'll be baseball all day long and we hope we are part of it. Here is Jack Segrist, the DH. Jumps on the first pitch and fouls it off to the right. 0-1. Segrist has played in one of the two prior games in this series. He's 0 for 2, but he did steal a base and score a run. He's hitting 236 on the season. After doing some charts and graphs, I actually have a pretty good idea of who would be in the Bulls side of the bracket. ECU for sure. 0 1 pitch fouled off again to the right. We know it won't be UCF or Memphis because they're in the 6 7 spots. That's set. And we know it won't be Cincinnati as they, what a great season for them, have clinched a top three. And for the Bulls, if you're wondering, they're either the eight seed or they aren't the seed. There's no longer any scenario where you can land anywhere but eighth. 0 2 pitch is outside. It's really simple, actually. It'll be ECU. Uh, and Houston, if it loses, is definitely going to be one of their teams. And the others, some combination of Houston, Tulane, and UConn. One ball, two strikes on Segrist, leading off the third. Here's a soft little line drive that will be over the head of Santos and into right field. First base hit, first base runner for Wichita State, and you have to watch Segrist, who swiped a base earlier, as we mentioned, and is 9 of 11 on the season. He's at first with nobody out. Oh, no doubt about it, and this kid laid down a sacrifice bunt in the series, which was news last night because, again, they had just four successful all year long sack bunts coming into the series, and they've added two to that total. Jacob Katzfi, one of eight. They send the runner, go to second, and they'll keep out of the double play. The throw is over in time to retire Katzfi. Segrist was on the run. That ball was hit sharply on the ground right to Santos. Taylor made 4 6 3 if Segrist had not been running. Instead, he is at second with one down. Oh, they 
got a smart coach over there, Todd Butler. There is no messing around right now. Now we're going to talk about this DH, David Van Voren, who is a freshman and a speed guy. He's only hitting 243, but you've got to be aware of the speed if he drops anything in the infield. Well, I'm sure I also want to change the signals with a runner at second base now. First time that Wichita State has had a runner in scoring position. Van Voren is 0 for 1 in the series. He made a brief appearance last night. 243 on the season, a homer and 11 driven in, hits it on the ground towards short. Bello goes to third, not in time. Well, Bello had no play whatsoever at first base because all his momentum was taking him to third. Segrist kind of breaking the rules, trying to go from second to third on a ball in front of him, but he got there on time. Bello made a good throw. The problem the Bulls had was that they didn't have a force. And by the time Sullivan got the tag down, it was too late. Runners at first and third with one away. Something that happened in the uh, USF softball game against South Carolina that got them going it was Lindsey Devitt. Again, breaking the rule, but it barely worked out. Squaring to bunt, not offering his Boyer, and he takes a ball. Van Voren is safe on a fielder's choice. So there's runners on first and third, and once again, kind of as he did last night, Jack Segrist really kind yeah. of shaking things up with his speed. The ball was hit pretty deep. I wouldn't be surprised if they changed that to an infield single. Like you said, no play at first. So why wouldn't that be a single? Bunt attempt, and it goes foul, one and one. Runners at first and third, one away. First threat of the day for Wichita State. Bulls leading one to nothing in the top of the third. Bulls again with the shift. Three infielders on the third base side. And with Janord holding the runner, there's a whole bunch of nothing on the first base side. Runner goes, it's a cue ball to Wisely, to second for one, on to first, double play, inning over. One, six, three, double play, gets USF out of trouble as Wisely alertly picked up a little cue ball grounder to him and knew right where to go with it to get the double play. We have played two and a half. It's one to nothing USF on the USF Radio Network presented by Marathon. He was trying to go the other way so hard. Yeah. That's as much as he could do it. That's wild. One to nothing Bulls as we go to the bottom of the third. The Florida Lottery has contributed more than $33 billion to support education. Your ticket purchase helps Florida students have a brighter future. Follow Florida Lottery on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Sullivan, Santos, Janord, two, three, and four for USF. Preston Snavely, after some early control problems, is settled down a bit. First pitch to Sullivan is fouled off to the right 0-1. Snavely 1 and a third. He did let an inherited runner score, but no runs, one hit, a walk, and a strikeout so far for him. And he's ahead of Sullivan here 0-1. Sullivan singled his first time up. Bulls got their run in the first. That's been it so far. Fly ball right field toward the line, not deep. Van Voren with a long run gets there, makes the catch, and Sullivan is retired 
for out number one. Well, I don't think anyone believes this is going to be a one nothing final, <laughs> although last night was pretty as close as you can get to it. So a little bit surprised, like you said, that they're not making Snavely go deeper in counts. Here is Jordan Santos. He walked his first time and eventually scored the Bulls' run when he was walked home courtesy of a free pass to Julio Cortez. First pitch to Santos is taken on the outside corner for a strike, so Snavely really appears to have figured some things out here. After being all over the place when he first came in, he has been all around the plate since then. Well, that take into account, he came into a bases loaded situation. That's not the easiest. No balls, one strike. It's sharply on the ground, but right at the first baseman, O'Brien will take this unassisted. Santos retired, and there's two away. Joe Genord now reached on a fielder's choice his first time. Incidentally, that, not that it mattered anyway, but only matter for the record of the man who hit the ball, Van Voren. But based on what I'm hearing, that's going to get changed to a hit. Wichita State was already sort of lobbying for it, and, and seriously, the kid does have a lot of speed. And I think he would have gotten on first base either way. Fortunately, it didn't cost the Bulls. Oh, it just got changed. <laughs> so there you go. Two hits for both teams now. First pitch to Janord is a strike on the outside corner. Give Van Voren a base hit instead of a fielder's choice. But the score still reads one to nothing Bulls. Oh goodness. 0 and 1 to Genord. Fouled off the catcher's mask and it's 0 and 2. Two outs, base is empty. Bulls leading one to nothing. They picked up a first inning run on a bases loaded walk. Snavely working very slowly against Janord here. And Janord says, enough. Yeah. Now back in the batter's box and ready to go with a count, no balls, two strikes. Swung on and missed, strike three, so Preston Snavely continues to impress. He gets a one, two, three, third inning. Derek will take you through the middle innings. We're going to the fourth. It's Bulls one and Wichita State nothing on the USF Radio Network presented by Marathon. One to nothing, USF. They have had difficulty against Preston Snavely, who has come in relief, and frankly, except for the infield single by Tyler Dietrich, that's just a minor blip. Since he was moved to the bullpen, that's the only hit he's given up. So Bulls might be having a tougher time to get through these middle innings, adding on to this one nothing lead than we initially anticipated. Didn't go well for the starting pitcher for Wichita, but you got to give the opposition, just like the Bulls, very much coaching for a must-win situation. And Todd Butler didn't waste any time changing his starting pitcher in the first inning of this game. That's the only run of the game so far for either team. Starting off the top of the fourth, and Alec Wisely delivers a fastball outside to Luke Ritter. Fouls off. 
Ritter line horn to left field. Chris Chatfield snagged it his first time up. Setting up well outside, Tyler Dietrich and wisely hits the target, but it indeed was outside. Not the best news from softball. USF now down 12 to 1 as FSU has hit four solo homers at the top of the fifth inning. Ball's fouled off by Ritter, one and two. And you heard right, it is the top of the fifth as they mix things up, which is kind of like a conference tournament in regional plays where two teams are playing and one was the home, one was the visitor the day before. It's reversed. Even though Florida State is definitively the home team in geography because it's on their home field. That ball was fouled off by Ritter. Fastball from Wisely, who so far been very economical. That was just his 33rd pitch as we are in the fourth inning. And man, oh man, did the top of the third end well for the Bulls when Shockers at first and third and one out a chance to tie this game. And you can see Boyer try to hit the ball to the hole on the right side, much like the one that Ritter is staring at here now as the Bulls have him shifted to pull two and two. And he absolutely tried to muscle it to the right, and it was to the right of the infield, but right to the glove of Alec Wisely. And Santos was ready to take the throw and double play him. Ball in the inside corner just misses. Good pitch by Wisely, but well taken by Ritter, and now it's full count. Wichita did get a leadoff batter on in that last inning. Even though it ended up stranding the one runner, always feels like two when it's a double play, though. Three and two. And that ball in the outside corner. Ritter has to take a hack at it, fouls it on. Too close to take. Alec Wisely, one of the Ten seniors honored here, Connor Eason being the other who is in absentia. Injured, went back home up north. Three and two, and that ball is hit well, but it's gonna go foul. See where it lands. Thought it might have had home run distance. Oh yeah, it did. But it stays three and two. Chesapeake, Virginia is where Connor Eason's from. Bulls, if you look at their outfield, Again, it would be Garrett Zek out there in right field, but for his hamstring injury suffered last weekend, they're going to lose their entire starting outfield seniors. That ball on the inside corner, strike three. As Ritter did everything you could to try and hoodwink the umpire, on the inside fastball, held the bat above his head and started sprinting to first. But you can't cheat old Carlos Ray, man. He is going to pull the trigger if it's a strike, and that was beautiful right on the inside heart of the plate. Oxymoron, I realize. There is no inside heart of the play. We call it a corner. Mason O'Brien, who plays over at first base. Again, it's been inserted like several members of this Wichita team from being a part-timer to a full-timer this year. They lost so many players. That ball is off speed. Waved on and missed by O'Brien. It flew out to Chatfield pretty deep. That was the one that fooled Chris Chatfield. You see the senior day ceremony. It does remind you of this team that the Bulls are playing at and lost so many players to the Shockers last year. Oh, outside corner, called a ball. And Tyler Dietrich hangs on to it for an extra beast beat there, but no no luck. And I think that might have had something to do with O'Brien. Setting up a little bit off the plate more than most batters. It was so outside to where he's standing that it looked like it couldn't have been a strike, but I think it caught 1-1. One and, one. and that ball's down the heart, he pops it up. Oh, Kyle Phillips thought he had a track, had to take a couple steps back, but now no issues, and he squeezes it for the second out. Sun could be a factor before this game is over. It's a very high sky today, and I think that was a case, too, where Phillips took a little bit of time to find it. Once he did, fortunately, he didn't have to go very far. Everyone's got their uh, shades on here today. Got to. Now they clean up the man, a guy who's a big power threat right now for this team, Paxton Wallace. Always hitting the ball to the left. That's interesting as he fouls that one off. And his first out here today was a grounder to third baseman Jake Sullivan. Hit the two sharp balls, including the one at the end of the game, to Sullivan last night over to the left side. But they don't have him shifted and defended normally. Slider tried to finish it on the inside corner. Didn't get the call that time. One and one. Crowd overreacting, and I mean that in a positive sense to every close call here. It just shows you how much they're into the game. It's been a couple of close pitches. That one was too far inside, two and one. 
So the Bulls with those 10 seniors, and again, Wichita last year lost 11 to the draft. With the third pick overall, Alec Bohm to the Phillies. Big time bats missing from the lineup. Two and one. Ooh, off speed pitch, swung on a miss, and a dandy there by Wisely. Great delivery, two and two. Managed his fastball delivery. It was about 10 MPHs slower. Two and two for another one, two, three inning. Oh, but the last one have been that route. Now he's going to have to deliver a full count pitch because that fastball got away from him. High, three and two. Wallace. Candidate to strike out, 49 on the season compared to just 18 walks. So anything across the plate, well, swings at that one and lifts it high. Bellow goes back, Chatfield comes in. It's one of those tweeners who's going to call for it. It's Chatfield at the last second. Bellow had to give himself up, and I mean at the last half second. But it was okay in the end as Chatfield makes the catch for indeed a 1-2-3 inning. We head to the bottom of the fourth. USF still on top, one to nothing. This is baseball on the USF Radio Network presented by Marathon. picked up a little bit too. Yeah. <clears throat> Twelve to one Tallahassee by the Four way. Four solo homers. Yeah, it just ended. End of the fifth. Well, it's the same as one to nothing in terms of how many losses. Alec Wisely, one of the 10 seniors honored before the game here, along with Connor Eason. Big group, and he has gotten the Bulls in position, much like his counterpart Colin Sullivan did last night. But let's see if the game can change a little bit. Last night it was hold on, hold on, keep the lead, 2-0 throughout from the fourth inning on. And it's been one nothing here since the first inning. Thanks to Preston Snavely, who the Bulls really haven't had much luck with. Go back to that four-pitch walk when he entered the bases loaded situation, and then Pedrado swung at what I thought was a high pitch, would have been three and one, and who knows if this game takes a different turn, but it hasn't. Stavely has gotten into it, and he's going to lead off with Chris Chatfield here, who walked to end the day of the starter. Connery Peters, first pitch. He faces from Snavely, is drilled deep to right field. The senior takes one deep. Right fielder going back. He slows down right at the wall. Center fielder comes over and makes the catch. That was right towards the gap. And Catsby ends up grabbing it. Thought he had it, but the wind didn't help. You mentioned the wind was starting to pick up, and I think it just cost the Bulls a run. Might have. I thought that ball was going to get out of here coming off the bat, and it just didn't carry quite enough. Mm -hmm. And it, it has been for the most part a still day from the wind. And with the fans here, we just got a little cloud cover. I'm sure they're not complaining about that or a little breeze, and I think the breeze was just timed perfectly for Wichita State. Navely didn't fool Chatfield at all with his fastball there. Julio Cortez, who had that four-pitch walk. Oh, he's seen a strike now. Snavely drops in that slider. It's 0-1. One hit on the board for Wichita, but two on the official scorebook. Two hits as well for the Bulls. And Jake Sullivan to get that first inning going. Hit single by Tyler Dietrich at the start of the second. That inning ended in a double play. Two innings have ended in double plays here today. Most recent helped the Bulls stay on top. Bottom of the fourth, that deep home run bid by Chatfield for the first out. That ball's outside. So it's 2 0. I thought that first pitch was a strike. Let's see what the plate umpire, if anything, Carlos Ray holds up. Yeah, he just holds up one and one. Absolutely. Snavely's first pitch was a slider right across. Both teams know it. Snavely taking his time delivering this one-on-one -on -one pitch to Julio Cortez. Here it is. And a 
Beautiful slider started inside. Uh, too far inside, lands right on the corner, two, uh, one and two. Utah State Shockers, below 500. The teams have kind of had reversals here over the last three weeks. The Shockers weren't in any inherent danger early in their conference schedule, but it seemed they were above 500 taking a series against UCF. Their record dropped to four below, two and one and two pitch, and Cortez stays alive with a foul ball, which he did often last night. On the Bulls had a stretch where they lost 13 of 16 with five below 500, and have gotten it back to level. Let's do a 16 and six run. Pitch, and that one's slow, and Cortez drives it to the left side of the infield, diving bit by Boyer, but it gets past him. So Julio Cortez times up the off-speed pitch, something that he doesn't always have the best of luck at, and that's a good sign of a base runner. And a good job by Cortez, because now we can see what Snavely will do with runners on base. He struggled when he came in with the bases loaded. Once he did finally get out of that jam, he has kept the bases pretty clear, but now he's got a runner on first with one away. And now it's going to be Austin Bedrado who struck out against Navely his first time up. Got him with that slider on an 0 and, uh, 1 and 2 pitch. Sorry, 2 and 2 pitch. As I recall that now. So one out. Well, certainly wanting to score multiple runs, it would be nice not have to sweat out the ending here. At least mentally. I think everyone's going to be swept by the end of the day. There's an event going on at the England Center, so I had to park far away. <laughs> far away. I'm going to be sweating after that walk. But hopefully it's a victorious one. Look at Cortez at first. If you look at the stats, he's got a couple steals <laughs> recently, but that ball's low. He's three for three on the season, but last night it was the old runner on third base. Cortez at first. Try and lure catcher into a throw and get him into a run down and score the run from third. That's how he got the two steals. But the box score doesn't denote that. As far as Wichita is concerned, he's a threat to steal. Take their time here and Austin Pedrado is going to step out. 1-0. Snavely pitched once against the Bulls last year to not much luck, and it was because of the walk, and now he's lost his command a little bit again, 2-0. I guess that Pedrado might take two this time. Snavely, there's a couple of conference starts. Okay, gave up five to two lane in five innings, but that can happen. But then seven against Houston, seven against Cincinnati, and given a 6-4 lead. 7-4 lead in that game and could not get it out in the second inning. So that was his last start in conference. He was back on April the 27th. His time on his 2-0 pitch. About a minute after the second pitch, here's the third, and it's high all the way. Looks a little different with a guy on base, doesn't he? Absolutely. And I'm not going to help anybody out here on the opposition, but I can just tell him he shouldn't be worried about the guy first base. Cortez is not going to try a stolen base. But, all right, it's definitely in his head, and that would explain probably the, the high walk totals. He walked four against the Bulls last year in one inning. Three runners scored against him in Wichita. Dotto taking all the way high strike, and this is where we'll see if it diverges from the last time Dotto struck out against Navely, and that is Navely. They can throw one more strike before he decides to swing. It's three and one. who has had more hits than anyone in this series is on deck. I'd love to see him get up there with runners on first and second. Again, Snavely looks over to Cortez, first base, for this 3 and one pitch. And it's grounded up the middle. This could be two. Oh, it's booted away, but no, it's right to the shortstop. What a lucky break. And depending on how you want to look at it, it should have been an easy double play anyway, but the second baseman, Reuter, booted it. Boyer very alertly grabbed it and turned it into an awkward but effective for Wichita 4-6-3 double play. We go to the fifth inning, still just one nothing USF. This is baseball, the USF Radio Network presented by Marathon. I don't want to say anything, but uh, 
Dietrich had his, you know, catcher gear on. Like, why? <laughs> you'd only have it on unless you're thinking a double play might happen. Well, Unfortunately, it did. I know we had the big hit last night, but. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a, that would have been a big break. I'm not every track lucky. Would have been lucky for the Bulls, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's a funny uh, picture that they tweeted out. As bad as this looks, the ball is in Chad's glove. Been now three double plays in the game, and I do want to retract my statement of if it was a lucky play for Wichita. It would have been lucky for the Bulls because Austin Pedrado lined one again on a three and one pitch. I think it would have been a strike, though. Let's, let's be honest there, but it would have been an easy double play before it became a complicated one. Bouncing off the second baseman right to the shortstop. Very alert play by Boyer, senior over there. He, like the seniors on the Bulls, want this not to be their last game. And it will be the last game for whoever falls today. Bulls have the lead right now, one to nothing, but it's been on the edge since they got that run in the first inning. It looked like they were maybe headed for something bigger. So Grotto struck out to leave the bases loaded. And Al Weisley has had to maintain his sharpness throughout. He starts off with a number five hitter. The freshman, Brady Slavens, flew out to center field his first time up. Slavens for his first hit in the series. And you can just tell we mentioned how they lost so much, so many quality bats last year. And Slavens, who is a 231 hitter, is in the five hole in the lineup. And wisely takes something off that pitch. Well taken by Slavens outside one and one. Now the sun. four rows of the stands over to our left where Wichita is waiting to creep forward their fans and a lot of them actually a couple dozen are here. Same thing on the USF side to our right friends and family all the seniors and the team wisely misses inside with that pitch to Slavens. It's two and one. You might have called him Snakely at one point. It's that guy who is pitching for Wichita and they are resting over there in the bullpen. He's done the job. Ball's fouled off two and two, much like Barnhouse did last night. Thought that Chris Chatfield had gotten a hold of one of those Snavely offerings, though. Almost hit a home run starting off the last inning. Her ball outside. Ooh, watch out over there. Fan in the, in the berm kind of saw it at the last second. Fortunately, she turned around. She's actually doing the personal protector thing, it looks like, to some kids out there. Two and two after the foul ball. Softball did fall today. 12 to 1. Five inning game there due to the run rule. The ball is hit high. And could stay in play. Joe Janort's going to give it a look. It's not going to stay in play. It's up a good bit foul, actually. Two and two. A bat like this has, as far as running up twice, his pitch count has been infrequent here today. 47 pitches through the first four innings. Sullivan last night ended up with 120. Had to work through that ninth, ninth inning. Wichita brought the tying run to the plate, but he finished the gym, which has the Bulls in position to win this series. Five more tough innings to go unless they can pad the lead. That ball's coming back this way. Three fouled off pitches now by Snavely. I'm sorry, there went again, Slavens. Time that fastball up okay, just missed it. Retrieving the ball. On deck man, Ross Cadena. Three seniors at the top of the order. Ooh, thought that pitch was pretty good. Might have been a little bit low and outside. Full count. So good at bat here by Brady Slavens. Freshman out of Olathe, Kansas. Saw his defensive prowess robbing a home run the other night. He's putting together a good at bat. That ball is headed towards the gap, but Kyle Phillips has a chance and he makes the catch. He's got great speed. The Bulls have some serious speed with he and Chatfield out there. And that's prevented a hit, in my opinion. 
read it really well, got a good jump on it. He did have a long run both coming in and over toward left field. Nice play. Talk about missing the entire outfield next year. The starting outfield is senior field with Garrett, a healthy Garrett Zag. Of course, we've got candidates with Austin Pedrado. Remember Brandon Shrepp play out there. And then pitch by Wisely. He's taken outside by Ross Cadena. Bulls will have to. Recruits and fill another hole in that outfield. It's, it needs to be filled. What about next year? Hopefully, in a week or so or more. That ball was outside, trying to hold up his swing there for West Cadena, but he didn't. In the opinion of the first base umpire, Scott Johnston, is one and one. It's a, I talked to the ball a little bit about the whole recruiting thing. I, uh, it's kind of a dance, one and one. That ball is stroke and that could bloop in. Alex Bello is going back. Jordan Sanchez will give way to a shortstop and he makes the catch for out number two. Wisely has only had one inning that wasn't one, two, three. So we want to get the best recruits as possible but since they can get drafted out of high school and you, you can't overshoot it's kind of strange. It's a tough thing. It's not easy. You just have to be resigned to losing some players that you recruit. It's amazing some of the players that signed with USF and never played here because they went in the draft. Often they go unannounced as that one was fouled off by Seacrest, who's been a tough out for the Bulls, Jack Seacrest, freshman. One of them was the late Jose Fernandez, great pitcher from Tampa Bay area who went on to a tremendous career with the Marlins. I can say there's they don't announce it until it's official because you know, players get drafted. But believe me, I can tell you, they got some guys recruited. That ball was square to right field, but Austin Pedrado mentioned the outfielder who will be returning. Had him played pretty well. And another 1-2-3 inning for Wichita and for Alec Wisely. As we go to the bottom half, still 1-0 Bulls. We've been there for a while. This is baseball on the USF Radio Network presented by Marathon. Five, buddy. Hey, I, I think Rocky the Bull wants to come up here and give you a high five. Your thoughts? Nope. USF Health is the largest academic medical center in West Central Florida, a place where discoveries are made, the future generation of professionals is trained, and nearly 900 specialists come together. USF Health, making life better. Tyler Dietrich had an infield single against Preston Snavely his first time up. And three hits in the first game of the series. He'll try and do what he did in the second inning, which is started off with a base hit. One of the three that the Bulls have in this contest. Just one run, holding on to that lead against the Shockers. Dietrich swings at that first pitch fastball, so again, as you observed, I think rightfully so. It's a guy who is, when he's had issues, he's been with walks at least lately. Those are swinging at a surprising amount of first pitches. If you look at his three appearances out of the pen since they removed him from starter starting rolls, so on one pitch in first well high one and one until that Dietrich single he hit his three previous out of the pen and first out of the pen this year not giving up a hit but he had walked six guys in three and a third innings so that is something that's been pretty consistent starter or reliever for this particular pitcher Preston Snavely one and one after that pitch well high in the zone starting off the fifth inning here with Tyler Dietrich at the dish 
very special family here. Sister Alexa battling cancer to winning it. And you see the hashtag Alexa Strong, that's due to her. So he's, he's a little more emotional than most of the guys today for understandable reasons. Now he's ahead in the count, two and one. And that fastball rises way high in the zone, so Snavely having issues right now. Dietrich having shoelace issues. Takes care of those. Usually the case is are filled with a little bit more clay than anybody else out there. He's been on the base paths here today as well as catching two and one. Let's see if he's taken. Oh, he's swinging at a pitch that maybe could have been high, so Cole's helping out Snavely in a couple of occasions here today, two and two. But then again, Dietrich's been swinging the hottest bat of the team this weekend. It's been the interesting thing. Mr. Janord hasn't really gotten it going. You can see that happening especially for him being a senior. Would love to get to him in the order here in this inning. And Dietrich is going to wear that one. And it's a ball that sails well inside. There's Snavely's lack of a command, not a walk, but just the same effect as he hits Dietrich to start the inning. Seventh man he has hit this season. And the Bulls have their leadoff man on for the first time since the second Look at the hit by pitch statistic on the team. Yeah, puts him second, tied with McGinnis of all people. Liam Eddy has hit 10 this year. That's who the Bulls saw yesterday. The Bulls are really going to need Alex Bellow to move this base runner up now. Tried a bunt last time, didn't work out. That was though with the runner, uh, same situation, absolutely. And it was able to third baseman Wallace, Wichita State, to get the out at second base. You're right. They have him played relatively normal on the diamond right now. You have the leadoff man on deck, nobody out in the inning. If you're bunting, you got to go to the right field side, uh, first base side. And Bello squares the ball's well out of the zone, though he pulls the bat back 1-0. Of course, the first baseman is covering the bag with Dietrich there. And honestly, O'Brien wasn't moving up when Bello squared. So the first baseline is the place to go. Garrett Zek, his hamstring injury, he had put together a couple of great months of play. He's probably the best on the team, but he's not available. Bello tries it, and he goes down the first baseline. The ball actually hops into play, and it I think it went from foul to fair. They do get the out at first, but Bello does the job. It'll go as a sacrifice. Kadena, the catcher, pounced on it. It might have rolled back foul, but it's hard to take a chance. He threw a fastball to first, and O'Brien had to really stretch <laughs> out or else that ball would have gone into right field. Wasn't, like the previous bunt, the most artistic-looking bunt, but it gets the job done. It, as I mentioned in the first baseline, it, it traversed it by about five feet. But that's all you needed to do. Good job by Bello. You're right, it was kind of hugging the line. Catcher didn't want a chance first and second. And nobody out. Instead, it's runner at second and one out and slider fades low in the zone to Kyle Phillips so he is taking to start off the at bat Phillips had the big hit that got the Bulls back to within a run after they were down seven to two in the opener of this series drove in three and that also had an RBI ground out he's had a hit in each of the two games did hit into a double play his last time up though taking all the way inside two and oh day of conference play for the regular season. Everyone except one team, the loser of this game namely, will convene in Clearwater on Tuesday. 2-0. See if Phillips is taken. All the way. High. And Preston Stavely's issues have returned. And that's good news for the Bulls. With a trio of outstanding hitters possibly slated to come to the bat in this lineup. To the plate, Jake Sullivan on deck. Has singled. Back off the starter, Connery Peters. 3 0. Runner on second base. You would anticipate a full take here from Phillips, and it almost hits up. And a four pitch walk. Now let's see if the activity starts to warm back up over there with Wichita in the bullpen. It does. Now Jake Sullivan comes. In fact, that might be it for Snavely. And that is.
is the head coach coming out. And it looks like we are going to have a pitching change. So he's seen this act before, and he needs his team to win this game too. So he's going to make a change. We'll be back and tell you about the new pitcher. Two on, one out, bottom fifth. Bulls trying to add to a one nothing lead. This is baseball on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. Also from Fort Collins? No. He is. Yeah. <laughs> They've got three Coloradans. That's funny. That is funny. Not a strikeout pitcher. No. Five wild pitches in 13 innings. <laughs> Third pitcher of the day for Wichita is a freshman we have not seen yet in the series, Calvin Marley, 6'4", 210. Pounder out of Fort Collins. Two consecutive pitchers from Fort Collins, Colorado. Different schools, though. This kid is from Fossil Ridge. The Sabercats, if I'm thinking right, but as far as how he's pitched this year, not a strikeout guy. 12 appearances, 13 and two thirds innings, so not long for the game, likely. Four strikeouts, six walks, with the big number you pointed out, Jim, right off the bat, was in the short amount of innings, five wild pitches. Well, it really goes through the uh, entire bullpen is command issues. The guy that yep. you kind of wonder if you're going to see sooner or later is Mitchell Walters, who got the save on Thursday night. He has been by far the most effective out of the bullpen in this series for Wichita State. And you're dead on there. I mean, why wait till the end of the game to pitch him? Then he will probably be asked to throw a couple of innings, no doubt, here for Wichita. So we'll keep an eye on the bullpen. Normally you'd save your closer, obviously, until the latter innings, but both teams will do whatever it takes here today. So first pitch from Marley and Jake Sullivan is swinging at that fastball and missing a 92 mile an hour. Bulls haven't seen anything like that here today. Boy, did he miss the spot though. They set up off the plate outside and that ball came in on the inside corner. He missed the target by a foot. Observed about Baron Stewart the other day, and it ended up costing him. Let's see if the same thing can happen here. Calvin Marley. And straight fastball. And Calvin had issues catching up to that as well, 0 2. Got some heat, though, doesn't he? Yeah. Which is not a strikeout pitcher, but you wouldn't be able to tell it from those first two. He does have a sharp curveball. seen it yet though. See if he pulls it off on the two strike pitch with runners on first and second. Nope, fastball. Wow, three straight. And a guy who rarely strikes out, Jake Sullivan, strikes out on three fastballs. And you go from having to be patient to maybe having to be ready to hit against this guy. Wow, first strikeout that he's recorded. April 28th, none of his last four appearances. You wouldn't be able to tell it. Jordan Santos now with two away. Runners on first and second. The Bulls have less than people out there in this game. Expanded three. Seems like more than that. Probably because there were two double plays. So in reality, there were five on the bases. Well, and all three were in one inning. Remember, they left them loaded in the first. Right, exactly. And then you add to it the two double plays again, not but a chance there at least. Runners on base. Double wiped out. Two of them out there now. Won't be a double play. I can guarantee you that. There's two outs. 1 0 pitch to Jordan Santos. Here is Marley. And he flares it to left field. Save fair. It does. Coming on around is Dietrich. Let's see if they wave Phillips. They do. There's going to be a play at the plate. And he slides in safely. A two RBI base hit for Jordan Santos. And the Bulls extend their lead to three to nothing. 
Boy, he tomahawked that ball, a pitch right around the eyes, and he drove it to the opposite field just inside the foul line. Dietrich and Phillips able to take off with the pitch with two outs and a huge moment in this game for the Bulls. I got to tell you, I can't remember the last time a ball that was close to being fair or foul like that actually landed fair for the Bulls this year. This guy in particular, Joe Janort, has had some shots that just barely went foul. But now that you've got the 3-0 lead, you can just sense it. Maybe the floodgates open. Santos with a double out there at second base. And boy, all oh, speed there. That curveball right on the outside corner. Good pitch by Marley. 0-1. So Jordan Santos. It's the 33 RBI mark. Second on the team, incidentally, behind this guy, who's got a 19 RBI lead now, Joe Denord. Into a fielder's choice, third base, and struck out in this game. 0-1. Oh, Denord wanted that fastball, but had some bite to it. Just dribbles it foul. Both of those runs charged to Snavely. Three and two-thirds, two runs, two hits, two walks, two strikeouts. And the runs that were allowed reached base on a hit-by-pitch and a walk. So exactly what we were talking about. Control issues for Snavely ended up costing him. No force, the runs came in on an actual hit. The first and only of the inning for the Wolves, but a big one by Jordan Santos. Now 0-2. Joe Janort facing the freshman Calvin Marley, who's taking his time now, is going to begin his delivery. There's the pitch, and Janort waves and misses at that curve. It's a good pitch, but that's all right. Jordan Santos timed up just a few before that. The tack-on runs that the Bulls have not had. They've not had any tack-on runs in this series until now. They scored two runs on the one hit. No errors, one left on base. We go to the six. The Bulls lead Wichita three to nothing. This is baseball, the USF Radio Network presented by Marathon. Big time, big time hit by Jordan Santos. It really has been hitting heroes spread out throughout the course of the series. There have been a whole ton of them, but he hits by Phillips. Game one, of course, was Madrado yesterday, and Santos who just went over to his shortstop Alex Bello and gave him a big hug. I think that was Bello instigating that because that was a huge hit that has the Bulls now up 3-0 as we start the sixth inning. And if you're Alec Wisely, wind picking up, incidentally. I almost lost all my papers up here. Now the clouds have conveniently covered up the whole field. Now it's up to Alec Wisely to do what he's been doing, shut down innings. Starts off with the number eight hitter who's been slotted down in the lineup, Jacob Gatsby, and then off to beat strike. On one. Gatsby into a ground out, four to three. Last time up, runner did advance, but he's behind 0-2. And, and is 0 for, sorry, does have one hit in the series. 63 pitches for Wisely now through five plus. It's a tremendous, tremendous ratio. Nothing been doing in the USF bullpen yet, but they've had anyone they want available. The ball is hitting right to Jordan Santos for a second time. Oh, a lollipop throw. And that was a little too close for comfort. It's an out, but that's been something that's happened in this series with Santos, and that almost cost the Bulls. Yeah, I think he's struggling with that throw. I don't know if it's a mental thing or not, but that ball was almost a base hit for Catsfee. He just threw a rainbow over there from very short range. I thought Janord was going to run off the bag, go out, catch it, and run back to the bag. He had to wait so long for it. 
And as we hit the number nine spot in the order, David Van Voren, he looks at a fastball for strike one. But I don't know if that's an ongoing issue or oh. not, Derek, but I mean, we've seen them go to Jordan Feist for defense late in the game. That may be part of the reason. And I'm telling you, that ball's fouled off 0 and 2. Van Voren incidentally hit that grounder deep to short. Bella tried to get the lead runner at third. It was later changed to a hit, so he is one for one in the game. But yeah, that's been the change over the last two weeks. Feist is Jordan Feist, great defensive player, been brought in for defense at the end of many a game. But instead of for Sullivan at third, it's been for Santos at second the last couple times. Ball's high. By my count, it's one and two. Yep, umpire holds those fingers up. Carlos Ray, number nine spot in the order. Even though that was a very close play, and Janor actually had to go on his tippy toes to try stay on the bag, which he did. Outside slider. Wisely would have preferred to put it more in the zone. Two and two is the count. So except for that inning I referred to with the Van Voren hit, Turns out to be the only hit of the game so far. Now that I think about it, hope that's not the only hit because then they can really kick themselves <laughs> on the changing of the ruling. That's right. That's right. They only have one hit on the board, but there are two hits. Good. The board's been a little off today. It's three and two, that is for sure. And he hits him. Wow. Don't want to do that to the number nine hitter. Absolutely for Alec Wisely. So let's hope that Van Boren's okay. Had to shake it off there before he went out to first base. So runner on, Billy Mole's going to come out and talk to his pitcher, Alec Weisel. So two hits, and Ben Bourne's been on base both times. And Billy Mole, of course, outstanding gauge of his pitcher's mindsets and temperatures and everything. He's going to calm down Alec Wisely, although this is top of the order time. And mentioned you got three seniors atop it. Jordan Boyer, Luke Ritter, both well above 300. Tough customers. This Boyer becomes a pretty big at bat because Ritter can knock it out of the park. With this wind kicking up, that might be a tough poke here today, but the point is, I want to get this guy. And wisely, just a very rare, very rare loss of command there. Well, we mentioned he is Hit 12 coming into this game, so that is one problem he has been dealing with. Obviously, that's his first of the day. That ball is hit to center field. A little bit of a late break before Kyle Phillips makes the catch. So first pitch swing in his boy. A little surprised, i got to be honest, and that important out just happened. I, I do remember the uh, two-lane game particularly is when Wisely just didn't have it. He hit four batters, I want to say, in that game. Contribute, obviously, a big boost to a stat. You don't ever see get boosted too much, but he overcomes it there. Laid one in, a nice fastball that boy was laid on, and now the danger is the next loop reader. Threaten to steal over there is Van Boren. Maybe not so much with it being a three run margin for Wichita. Yeah, you want to keep him close, but realistically, there's two outs in the inning and you're up three. I think you, you really want to focus on Ritter here. First pitch was low in the zone, 1 0. That one, oh, it's the high strike given. We haven't seen many opportunities for that part of the strike zone to get tested out here today. Carlos Ray gave it to Alec Wisely. Pretty big call there, 1 and 1. Last night, Jerry Johnson, I thought, did a great job as a home plate umpire, consistently allowed those high strikes. Do check over with Van Horn. Slides back in safely. So 1 and 1, two outs. Wisely on pace to go deep again for the Bulls, although there's more activity over there in the bullpen. Looks like Noah Yeager throwing a lefty who can go multiple innings. But since we are in the top of the six with two outs, maybe get one, two out of him, and then get to Nelson Alvarez. Yeah, I was going to say, I think Yeager could be a good bridge, the soft-tossing lefty before you get into the power arm right-hander in Alvarez. 3-0 lead runner is going. There's the throw down. Decent one by Dietrich off to the side. Yep, that pulled Santos a little bit too far from the back, so it is a stolen base. Pitch was a ball. It's 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, the throw was to the shortstop side of the base, and that made the difference. It was a good, strong throw, and it was there in time, but it was offline. 
the runner in scoring position, but a two and two count, so wisely can discard any concerns about the man on base. His fifth steal in six attempts, although it had been a good eight games since he even attempted one. The 21 steals last year in high school, and right out of the gate in that role kind of for Wichita. And they go the opposite way. Van Bourne is going to score as a result of the stolen base. Austin Pedrado boots the ball, but that doesn't hurt anything. It's an RBI single, and it's 3-1. to one. Well, again, Ritter was the guy you wanted to really focus on there because a quality hitter with 33 driven in. If you get them, you're going in to sit down. So, unfortunately for the Bulls, they allow the stolen base, and then Ritter just does his thing to the opposite field. And they have had... Top two guys, righties, shifted every single time, and it's worked out a lot. It's worked out against this guy, Mason O'Brien, who they do not have shifted now. Now Bella gets a little bit closer to the bag, and uh-oh, that ball is drilled to right field. We could have a tie game, and we have a tie game. Mason O'Brien absolutely rips a two-run homer, and both with two outs. The Shockers have come up with two big hits to make the score three apiece. Only question was fair or foul, and it was fair. O'Brien hit that ball a ton over the right field wall. Just his fourth homer, but we saw it in batting practice. I, I noticed it the first night that that guy had some power, and that was even further than anything we saw. That drifted into the tops of the trees out there. Wow, did not see that coming innocently as a hit by pitch to a number nine batter on a three and two count. That's how the rally started. And give credit to each of those last two batters though for what they did. And now it's a guy who can also hit a home run. Paxton Wallace, he fouls off that fastball 0-1. Unfortunately, the Bulls got those tack on runs. I mentioned they hadn't had any in the series. Falling behind in the first game. Couldn't add after the two RBI double by Bedrado. Stayed two nothing last night until that Santos Two run single, and it stayed one nothing. Good, good news is we're tied. And wisely bounces back to get ahead. 0 and two here. That ball's fouled off by Wallace. He is 0 for two today. Billy Mole wasn't kidding when he said the Bulls don't do anything easily. Slider just outside one and two. That was pitch number 80 for Wisely. So obviously the Shockers have gotten to him in this inning. That one almost, I guess it did hit the batter. Now he says he says it did, <laughs> but I don't think he got out of the way enough. That's embarrassing if you're Paxton Wallace, it's two and two. I don't think the ball even hit him. Yeah. Butler, the head coach is coming out pointing to his elbow. And obviously if you're Wallace and you start going to first base, you're pretty sure it hit you. But I thought the ball landed close enough to home plate and Wallace wasn't exactly crowding it. That's nothing that you can overturn. It's two and two. So that's not going to work out for Wichita, although they've had stuff work out in this inning. The two big, two out hits have us tied. Now it's up to Alec Wisely to try and keep it that way. And that is the call. It was not hit. It was not a case of not getting out of the way and being hit. And that ball is flared to right field. Austin Pedrado coming in on it, fighting the sun, winning the battle. But Wichita State won the battle overall in that inning. Three runs on two hits. The big one, a crushed two-run homer by Mason O'Brien. And it's a new ball game. Tied at three as we go to the bottom of the sixth. This is baseball on the USF Radio Network presented by Marathon. Dang.
three runs by Wichita State. All of the hits coming with two outs. And Alec Wisely with that hit by pitch to the number nine batter. You thought after Jordan Boyer got the, Wisely got Jordan Boyer on the next pitch for the second out, that things were gonna be just fine, especially in a three nothing game, but RBI single against the shift by Luke Ritter. And then a hammered home run by Mason O'Brien. Well, here's a lefty who could do the same thing. To start off the bottom of the six for the Bulls, Chris Chaffin. He almost took one out his last time up. And there's a quality pitch there. A changeup by Calvin Marley, the freshman. Third pitcher of the day for the Shockers. Came on to strike out Joe Nord after giving up that two-run double though to Jordan Santos. Chatfield, we think, checked his swing there. He did. They asked for help. Boy, some Wichita fans there. Whoa! One lady stood up and yelled. Didn't just voice her displeasure, stood up and yelled it. A distinction to be sure. She is sitting down the left field side as our Wichita fan, so maybe they felt they had a better angle on the Chris Chatfield check swing as he is. But anyway, it's one of one. Pitch by Marley, and that's called on the outside corner. Good pitch, one and two. Mentioned the other games going on in the conference. The one that is happening right now does not affect things. That's the ECU Memphis game. One and two. Technically, Memphis could finish sixth seed, but the point is, six or seven really doesn't make a difference. And Memphis and UCF are in the six, seven spots. So the Bulls will not see either of those teams if they get to. Clearwater as the eighth seed. They'll see ECU and whoever the four and the five are. Two and two pitch to Chatfield, and he checked his swing there. Three and two. Try to get him with that off-speed pitch. So basically, it's easy to know who the Bulls side of the bracket teams are going to be. Them if they win. But we're tied at three. ECU. And I'll give you an idea who the four and the five seeds will be. That's two or three teams. Here's the full count. And Chatfield. Oh, called strike three. Got the inside corner with it. The umpires on the Wichita side of the stands are happy now as they stand up and applaud. Tough 3-2 pitch. In fact, if you're Chris Chatfield, you cannot blame him for taking that one as it was biting slider on the inside portion of the plate. Would have been almost impossible to do anything with. And I think it's swept across barely that inside corner now, Julio Cortez, who walked with the bases loaded and singled. And that's, you might have heard a fan say same pitch. It got the same side of the play, same part of the plate, but it was outside to the righty. So that's one thing I've noticed with Carlos Ray, anything that's outside with a batter that's not really crowded the plate, maybe it's a visual thing, I don't know. Well, and that ball's pounded down the right field line. Has a chance to stay fair, but stays in the stadium, but out of play. So if Houston, they play UCF tonight, loses, they'll be an easier way to look at it. If Houston wins tonight, you know the teams would be Tulane and UConn. And the Bulls will be matched up with them. they got to win this game first. Think about it. They do anything they can to get to Clearwater in this game, as both teams would. And that ball stays high. Leading because EC has just run away with it. It's taken a lot of wins from everybody in the middle, but still some quality teams. We've seen them all. Two and one, I should correct myself. That ball's tapped out. Now it's two and two. Fastball, 92 miles an hour. So Calvin Marley, look at the guys out of their pen that have pitched 20 or more innings. They have four of them. I had 20 or more appearances, I should say. And Mar Marley has just done 13 and two thirds innings. Usually a one inning guy, but he's been pretty effective those two inherited runners. The Bulls are thankful that he did because it gave them a cushion to keep this a tie game now at 3-all. Cortez taking that inside pitch and it's 3-2. and two. So For the second time this inning, the Bulls have worked a full count. The Bulls have drawn four walks in this game. Wouldn't mind it here. 
This man, last time he did, it brought in a run. Leo Cortez had his best game of the series by four today. And he swings at that one deep in the hole to short. Not the best runner. Decent play by the shortstop, except throw, the throw gets away. That is an error all the way. And I'm not sure exactly who they're going to charge that on. I thought that was fieldable by O'Brien. It's probably going to go as an E6. Ball was there in time, but they didn't make the play, and the Bulls have a base runner with one out. Boyer, like I said, had to go deep in the hole. And with Cortez not being the most fleet of foot, he had it by a long way. And it's an error for sure. And now can the Bulls take advantage? They do give it to the first baseman. So, ruled to have been a catchable ball. So the man who has the big hit for Wichita now has a defensive misplay that could help the Bulls take back the lead. One out, runner on first base. Cortez has reached base all three times now. Dorado, last time in this situation. And that ball gets away. Cortez, you know it's far away when he's going to easily get to second base as he lumbers in there. Now a runner in scoring position for Austin Pedrado. So that takes out the double play I was just about, about to mention. Get into a 4-6-3 the last time up, but that's the benefit of that wild pitch. Error and a wild pitch. Whatever it takes, like I said. You mentioned the wild pitches earlier, Jim. You were right on the money. It's number six on the season. Austin Pedrado, less than 24 hours ago, pounded a big two RBI hit. They come up with another go-ahead hit here at a 3-3 score. Takes it inside. It's not much different than the one that they got Chris Chatfield looking at, but it was further inside, 2-0. This kid, especially a freshman, throw a strike. So catcher Roscadine is going to go out and speak to him. Sophomore freshman battery, Tyler Dietrich. On deck. <laughs> didn't want to say it at the time. Since the double play happened, I can. Dietrich actually had his catcher gear on last time just in case. And he doesn't have it on this time, so he knows that he's going to come up. Cortez out there stretching his legs just in case. That's the thing here be mindful of. Otto pretty much has to find a gap or a line. Or just hit it over the wall to assuredly bring Cortez home. Any kind of hit would be welcome. 2-0 after the mound chat. Here's the delivery. And it gets away again! Wild pitch number seven on the season. Well, the last two hurlers for the Shockers have lived up to their reputations, fortunately for the Bulls. Cortez Hardly had to move to get from home to third base. And they're going to go ahead and walk Austin Pedrado. I'm not sure how I think about that. I'm, I'm sure that the thought is obviously one thing from Wichita and double play. They might have another double play pitcher that they're going to bring in because out comes the head coach, Todd Butler. It can also almost be assured that there's going to be a pitching change here. Boy, let's make it official. He hasn't given the signal yet. And Boy, we know that Wichita, in general, slows things down. Now he makes the signal. So big situation coming up here for the Bulls. Pitching change. We'll take a break with a tie score, runners on the corners, and one out in the bottom of the six. This is baseball. The USF Radio Network presented by Marathon. Who will be? I'm bringing that. Walters did. This guy looks like a lefty dunk. Could be Siegel. Yep, Thank you, wild pitcher. Oh, he's not happy. Another youngster from the west coast of the country, west side from Arizona, Alex Siegel comes in. A lefty 
into a situation where runners on the corners and with the intentional walk, clearly Wichita is hoping this particular lefty, Alex Siegel, is able to induce a ground ball. He did throw against the Bulls in that eighth inning when the Bulls were making their comeback. And in that game, induced a ground out by Leo Cortez before walking Austin Pedrado. Then he was pulled from the game. Overall this season, though, 27 appearances, most for the team. Owen Wolf with a 6.14 ERA, 29 and a third innings, 39 strikeouts. They may also be thinking strikeout, but they put a runner on first intentionally to think a double play as well, 25 walks. That's got to be the reason because also they're bringing in a left-hander to face a right-handed batter in Tyler Dietrich. So they got to believe that he can get a ground ball here. He actually has to deal with two consecutive right-handed batters until he gets to Phillips at the top of the order. Dietrich has only hit into two double plays this year. Joe Janord leads the team in that category with five. So kind of a risky move. Dietrich has been making good contact. Infield single hit by a pitch and scored in the two-run fifth inning on the big hit by Jordan Santos. This will be a great answer back by the Bulls if they can re-untie this game. Wichita played at three in the top half of the six, and now we're in the bottom half. Great chance here for the Bulls. Fourth pitcher they'll see. Alex Siegel is from Arizona. And cuts a pretty big figure out there at 6'4, 190 pounds. Which they have infield played for sure to try and get the double play here. Not going to give up a run anytime soon in the tie game of the Shockers. What a runner is going, and that is a great move and no throw. And there goes the double play. Ball is a strike incidentally a curve 0-1. Smart move by the Bulls. Austin Pedrado takes second, six steal. Naturally, they're not going to risk the throw. Now the infield come in. Infielders come in. Maybe thinking a bunt here from Dietrich. Any sort of contact with the infield so far in. The hard contact's going to be good. Tried to make it there on a curveball, but fouled it off 0-2. Well, they'll come home if they get something straight at them. Mm -hmm. Remember Cortez, not the greatest speed at third base either, so this is a little bit of a challenge for Dietrich here. Takes off the one, especially now with two strikes. Field in just in case. A lot of room there to pop it into if Dietrich can time one up here. Siegel a little bit more off-speed approach here. 0-2, he gets ahead, there's a curve that Dietrich can't handle. Great pitch, swung on a miss, strike three certainly what you were hoping for if you're Wichita State. So Alex Siegel mentioned his strikeout numbers. Give him 40 in 29 and two-thirds innings. And that was a dandy pitch. Now it's going to be up to Alex Bello. Recently in a two and two-thirds inning performance, Siegel struck out four. Oh man, two outs. Freshman with two in scoring position. And he takes a hack of that identical pitch and misses. Bulls having issues with that curveball from the big lefty. Alex Bello in this game. The ground ball became a fielder's choice. And his sacrifice bunt was well laid down, but he's got to hit something here. And it's probably going to have to be a curveball. Cortez at third. Madrano at second. There it is. And Bello barely gets a piece of it. So right now. Alex Siegel doing some job. Five pitches, five strikes. You gotta be in ultra protect mode here if you're Alex Bello. And feel back at normal depth. There is some room down the right field line if you do want to get sneaky, but not with two strikes. One two pitch here comes and that almost hit him. Inside with the curveball there, one and two. First ball that Siegel has thrown. Didn't get a strikeout in his appearance Thursday, but has one here, and Alex Bello has to come through. Or else Wichita will undoubtedly keep the momentum. This is a big, big spot. Shocker scored three in the top of the sixth to tie this game at three apiece. One two pitch. It's a curveball ball just low and inside. Good eye by Alex Bello. 
Catcher Ross Cadeen is actually going to consider walking the batter here intentionally. Is that what they're discussing at two and two? No, I think they're. I think they saw something they didn't like in terms of signals, and they want to get on the same page. It's interesting to bring out your pitching coach to talk about a series of signals. We'll see. Now it's the catcher calling for this meeting. And of course, they've got a pitching coach with all sorts of recent major league experience in Mike Belfry. So, the other thing I would say, and, and I'm guessing from this far away, is that maybe Kadena saw something in Siegel's delivery and thinks that Siegel might not be 100%. They haven't asked for the trainer, but it definitely was the catcher that wanted to have this conversation, as you said. The umpire didn't go out, so I think Kadena. Whatever he said, the umpire understood what was happening there. Very interesting. All right. Well, it's a strategy session, I'm guessing. All of his pitches have been curveballs here, pretty much. Every single one of them. Two and two. Runners on second and third. Two away. Tie game, bottom of the six. Freshman in a big spot, Alex Bello. Here's the pitch, and it's a curveball that stays outside that time. Three and two. So a couple of on the corner, tough ones to take. And the count has been run full. Alex Bello has not walked a bunch of times, 11. And that curveball is hit to the second. Ritter is going to field it. Bello is going to give it his all, but not be in time. So they strand a couple of runners. The Bulls have stranded six in this game. And we stay tied as we go to the seventh, three apiece. This is baseball, the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. Chase ball four. I'd go with Alvarez. Looks like Lyle. Or Alvarez. Yeah, makes sense. Wouldn't be surprised if they go with their guy, too. Nothing to lose. Yep. We are tied at three in the top of the seventh and the Bulls are going to their closer, and it makes all the sense in the world. As it's Nelson Alvarez, fresh arm, hasn't pinched since last weekend, closing that first game last Saturday, so a week ago. And his job, I'm going to guess, Jim, is not to have a three-inning save, or it wouldn't be a save, obviously, a three-inning outing, but just to keep the score where it is uh, for the opposition, as long as he can. No reason to save him. Certainly has the opportunity to go multiple innings. If he can get the Bulls home safely here pitching three, they will gladly do so. You cannot be thinking about Tuesday. You can't save anybody. Got to do everything you possibly can to win today or else you are wait until February. Nelson Alvarez, strikeout pitcher, fastball pitcher, also has a great changeup, has appeared in 22 games. 4-2 record with eight saves and a 3-5 ADRA, which actually leads the team among regular appearers. 32 and two-thirds innings, 38 strikeouts, 20 walks. He does have 11 wild pitches and seven hit by pitches. Some, sometimes he does overthrow, but he has got a big league arm, no doubt about it. And I wouldn't be surprised if Wichita answers with its closer. So both teams, as you say, have to manage as if there is no tomorrow because there is no tomorrow for the loser of this game. Of tomorrow, they just won't be playing baseball anymore this season. So, starting off five, six, seven in the order, and you like the advantage here, you think anyway, to be with the power armor of Nelson Alvarez against the freshman Brady Slavens, 229 hitter, flied out to center field both times here today, does not have a hit in the series. Alvarez's first pitch here in the top of the seventh. Fastball, 96 miles an hour. Called strike one. 
I <laughs> just heard a couple of Wichita people react. They hadn't seen him pitch yet, obviously. Like, oh, man, that was different. A few more radar guns out in front of us. Those would be scouts. Own one. And fastball outside corner. Boy, Alvarez thought he had that pitch. Alex Bello grounded out to end that six. Might have swung at ball four on the curveball, but maybe too close to take. One and one, that pitch really close to being a strike. And that one he can't hold up on. Would have been a ball, but Slavens went around that. Yeah, absolutely, yes, he did. Talkers disagree, but I can tell you from our vantage point, clearly unable to check his swing was Slavens. One and two, does Alvarez break out the change up here? It's in his arsenal, and it's a dynamite pitch, especially against a team that hasn't seen it yet. Especially against a freshman, let's see what he does. Two. And it didn't break out the changeup. 96 mile an hour heater swung on a miss. Strike three. So great start for Nelson Alvarez. Now Ross Canino. 0 for 2. 0 for his last couple of games. Tie score at three. Incidentally, closing the book on Alec Wisely. Went six innings, ran into trouble, gave up all three runs there in the last inning. Four hits, three runs. Two strikeouts, no walks, a hit batsman that cost him in the end in that inning. He threw 82 pitches. And that ball is waved at missed. He is going exclusively heater right now. 0 and 1. Ross Cadena is going to take a little bit of a step out of the batter's box for the group. Neither team has seen a power arm like this. Well, I take that back. Uh, Walters has a good heater. Bulls found that out as he saved the first game of the series. Mitchell Walters down there in a bullpen. I wouldn't be surprised to see him going pretty soon. 0-1. Oh one. one away here. Top of the seventh. And there's that change. Up. Woo! Beautiful. On the inside corner. Medina didn't even think about offering at that one. No action in either bullpen right now. This is certainly Alvarez's game for at least the next two innings. He hopes to be a winning pitcher. Now it's 3 to 3. 0 oh 2 pitch. And he gets him swinging and missing at the fastball running away. Three pitches and a strikeout. Alvarez kind of had to bite his nails a little bit as along with the rest of the team that last time out against UConn with first and third at the end of the game, but he got the save and a one run victory. Has again not pitched since then, so his arm looks well rested. Fans get a chance of catching a t-shirt after every strikeout, and they hadn't get, gotten many chances here today. Wisely struck out two in his six innings, and guess what? Alvarez has matched that total. That fastball was low and outside to Segrist. 1-0. Jack Segrist. The DH roll here today in the number seven spot. Has singled in. Flew out to right to end the fifth inning. Get the Bulls. We're tied now. And fastball called on the outside corner. <laughs> Actually pointing. Literally a Segrist. Maybe a freshman mistake there. <laughs> it's okay to say something to the umpire sometimes. But pointing might be a step too far, one and one. But he did have a point. It was on, on the very outside, one and one. Number seven hitter. Alvarez tries to hit that same spot, but it was far outside with the fastball. Two and one. See, he goes to 243 hitter. Out of Plano, Texas. Did not play the first game. 0 for 2, but walked and stole the base yesterday. So, as a guy you don't want to put on in a tie game, he does, does have some speed. Two and one, pretty big pitch. And he just barely gets a piece of that fastball. Two and two. Looks like Alvarez. May decide at this point to just throw it right down the middle. As Wichita has not shown the ability to catch up to it, at least this bottom part of the order. And that's a fine and dandy approach, I'm sure, for the Bulls. And start to get ready to hopefully applaud another strikeout here. Looking to strike out the side or just get any sort of out here. Two and two in a tie game. Top of the seven. Here's the pitch. And fastball down the middle, and he hits it pretty well. Kyle Phillips gets a jump, though, and makes the catch. That ball was laced. Kyle Phillips 
has had a couple of good running catches here today and a 1-2-3 inning. We'll head to the bottom of the seventh. USF and Wichita State in the battle for the beach, all tied up at three. This is baseball, the USF Radio Network presented by Marathon. how to hit a curveball because we're going to have to do it. Tied up at three apiece and it'll still be the lefty out there. Alex Siegel just saw his last warm-up toss at fastball at 87 miles an hour but he threw basically every single pitch as a curveball to get out of a big spot as the bull stranded two in the bottom half of the six. He's the fourth pitcher of the day for the Shockers, and he gets a lefty on lefty to start off here in the seventh inning. Nelson Alvarez did the job, though. A one, two, three, top half. In this very meaningful contest. And the first pitch is actually curve well outside. Seagull to Phillips, 1-0. Even at the other games, uh, Memphis UConn, those teams, Memphis ECU basically playing out the string and ECU knows where it's going. They're trailing Memphis 10-5, not pitching their main guys today, although we just saw a good note in that game. Here's the 1-0 pitch from Phillips, outside. A pitcher by the name of Memphis who's only thrown once since March. His name is Walker Brockhouse, just faced Spencer Brickhouse. Other than that, the game doesn't really 2-0. Siegel had that curveball dancing perfectly 12-6 in the last inning, but it's been more 3-9 here. There's the curveball back again. That was a dandy. Taking for a strike, 2-1. Bottom of the seventh inning, tied at three. Top of the order for the Bulls, though. Kyle Phillips walked and scored last time up. Bulls will take it any way they can get it. Walk, hit by pitch, hit by pitch, <laughs> as it just happened. Thankfully, Alex Siegel has a line on our broadcast and followed suit there. So a leadoff man again for the Bulls. Got no bite whatsoever on that curveball, and it just stayed inside, wound up hitting Phillips right in the back. That's a great start for the Bulls. No doubt. lefty on deck. That would be the reason I would guess that Siegel stays in the game here. Jake Sullivan. See if he can get it going. He did not look good in his last at bat struck out. And <laughs> Coach Butler just came out and kind of shook his head as if to say, nope. We're going to go righty righty. And we'll see who it is. There'll be another pitching change. Both managers doing everything they can, especially Wichita when it comes to a point of view from pitching. Another pitching change for the Shockers. Number four. Take a break and be back. This is baseball on the USF Radio Network presented by Marathon. Yeah, it's got to be that Walters guy. It doesn't got to be, but I'm guessing. I, forget, I think he just said 32. I think the umpire just held up 32. would be Lindemann if that's the case. Yep, it is. All right, I'll take it. Come on, Jake. Base hit. That's all you need.
fifth pitcher of the day is another one the Bulls haven't seen, Jacob Lindemann. And he's only thrown in 11 games, nine and a third innings. The 6.75 ERA. Little surprised, honestly, and it would be early in the, under normal circumstances to bring in your closer, Mitchell Walters, although he threw quite a few pitches the other day. And instead, it's another righty. Jacob Lindemann is a sophomore out of Burlington, Wisconsin. He comes into a situation with the runner on first base, nobody out, bottom of the seventh inning. Under normal circumstances, in a normal setting, he would really like the Bulls' chances right here and feel pretty comfortable, but nothing's been comfortable <laughs> this weekend. It's going to be earned, whoever earns this series victory, and this is the last game of the series. Lindemann becomes the 11th different pitcher that Wichita State has used in this series. Not that we're counting. Gosh, the Bulls only have used a couple the last two days. Would like for Alvarez to be in a close it down situation. He pitched the top of the seventh and release relief, relief of Alec Wisely, went the first six. Couldn't quite finish the job, but certainly gave the Bulls a chance. Last time Lindemann pitched was on Tuesday night, just needed for a third of an inning. So again, doesn't look like a guy who would go deep in the contest. And there's a nice bunt by Sullivan, only plays to first base, and they make it. But Jake Sullivan moves the runner over with a perfect sacrifice bunt. That was beautifully executed. Only guy that could make the play was the pitcher, and the only play he had was going to first. So, like we were talking about before Phillips got plunked, anything it takes, even if it's not a hit. A couple of wild pitches had the Bulls hopeful that they might score in the last inning. Error in there. But this guy came up with a hit last time up. Jordan Santos drove in two for a 3 0 lead. Now he's got another chance to be a big hitting hero in this game. Looks at the ball well outside. 1 0. You're wondering, no lefties throwing in the which top offensively. Could have gone completely mix and match here with the lefty Santos up. Taking his time now is Lindemann. Too much time. Santos steps out. He pitched in conference was one inning against ECU. Basically, has pitched once in each series. And this is his first appearance in this one. And that curveball, no bite on it. Stayed high the whole way. 2 0. Oh. So we like this guy so far. He continues in this route. I predict we'll see another pitching change in this inning. But maybe Santos can get a hit and give the Bulls a lead before that. Boy, they have him play deep on the right side of the infield to pull that way. Santos poked one opposite way just inside the foul line for that two-run hit. That one is going the other direction, and that's one that's going to go foul, though, into the Wichita State bullpen. Let's see if I can figure out who's pitching out there right now. I'd be surprised if it's not Mitchell Walters. Now I'm surprised it's not. They're going to wait on him. The Bulls have not waited on their closer. Two and one. Santos had the same thought process he did on the previous hit, which was the biggest hit of the game for the Bulls. It would be second place to if he could get another one here, give the Bulls back the lead. Stepping out of the batter's box again for both teams. Making sure they try to not make any little mistake. Two and one. One away, bottom seven, tie score. Kyle Phillips at second base, and that ball hits the inside corner. Good pitch. Take it for a strike two and two. Not much behind that fastball, but the location there was fantastic. Now Santos has to prepare himself for that. And Santos has walked. Again, the big hit, the two run double for the Bulls. The teams have four hits in the contest. time before making deliveries Lindemann. Here it is. Tried for the same spot, but it was low. Good job by the catcher. Moscadine has made some tough plays here today. Full count. Looks like we've been in this spot a few times. More with the Bulls. Bad than Wichita. Three and two count to Jordan Santos. Been clutch throughout much of this season with another big one here today and help guide the Bulls to the conference tournament. 
three and two to him. And outside pitch, he takes a hack at. Swings in and misses a 93 mile an hour fastball. So dialing up something there for the strikeout. Looked outside, Santos couldn't hold his swing, and now there are two away. Joe Genord, maybe the storyline seeds to the senior who has struck out twice here today. 0 for 3. In fact, Joe for the series is just 1 for 10. And he's going to stay 1 for 10. Because they're going to intentionally walk him. That's, that's smart if you're Wichita. His run doesn't especially hurt you any more than 4-3 or 5-3. You want to keep it 3-3. Three three, and that's the idea of intentionally walk him. Chris Chatfield now comes up, another senior. And a nice round of applause here from the fans and family that are here to hopefully see him put the Bulls back on top. Boy, just like they had Santos, the second baseman Ritter is playing very deep. Expecting a pull here from Chatfield. Senior from Spoto High School. Walked, flew out deep to center and struck out his last time up. And that was a beautiful curveball, taken all the way on that. Nothing much you could do with it 0-1. So these last two pitches by Linneman have been very impressive, impressive for the sophomore. 93 mile an hour fastball. Granted, might have been outside. And that's a beautiful curveball. Sophomore's pitchers have just done enough been shut down relievers like we saw last weekend with UConn, but we've gotten the job done for the most part. It's three to three. Taking a little extra time there is Lindemann. Chatfield stepped away. Now we're ready. 0-1 and same pitch. Swings on and misses it. 0-2. Got to give the Shockers credit. We don't want to do that anymore, though. Nice bunt by Jake Sullivan had the feel of something that could end up working. It did in the fifth inning, eventually, with two outs and two strikes. In the case of Santos, let's see if the same thing plays out here. 0-2, and, and he tries the fastball. Low, 1-2. if he was trying to get that spot. He's trying to catch Cat Chatfield late there as he did Jordan Santos. Showing some boys here is looking at him. Again, hasn't thrown a ton of innings this year. Just one per series, but his arm must be fresh. Oh, curveball, real fresh there. Chatfield looks at it, and the Bulls strand another couple of runners. We're still tied as we go to the eight, three apiece. Jim Lapp will take it the rest of the way. This is Baseball, the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. Fastball hitters to get through now, eventually. Yep, we do not have the advantage right now. Tie game as we go to the eighth. Three runs, four hits, one error for Wichita State. Three, four, and O oh for the Bulls. Bulls fans, when the Bulls win, you win with Papa John's Pizza. This season, get 50% off your regular menu price online order at papajohns.com the day after the Bulls win. Use online promo code USF wins. Papa John's Pizza, the official pizza of USF Athletics. Better ingredients, better pizza, papajohns.com. Nelson Alvarez on for his second inning of work. And he will face Jacob Catsfee, the number eight hitter. 
And he starts him with a strike on the outside corner. Katzfi has grounded out to second on two occasions, 0 for 2. Both teams with three runs and four hits. The big difference in the line score left on base. Bowles have stranded eight. Wichita State only one. Fastball high, one and one. Wisely for six innings. Allowed three runs all in his final inning of work. Alvarez a scoreless seventh and now continuing into the eighth. One ball, one strike. Change up, swung on and missed, one and two. Winner today will play on Tuesday as the eighth seed in the conference tournament in Clearwater. The loser today will see their season come to a close. Katzfee now one of ten in the series, one ball, two strikes. That's all you get, swung on and missed, strike three, one down. Alvarez has struck out three of the four men he has faced. David Van Voren now, the right fielder. Bulls have not retired him today. He had an infield hit in the third, was hit by a pitch, stole a base, and scored on the RBI single by Ritter in the sixth. Bulls scored a run in the first. They got two in the fifth to make it three to nothing. There's a strike, 0 and 1. But then Wichita State came back with a three spot in the top of the sixth, and that's where we stand, all tied in the eighth. No balls, one strike on Van Voren. 0-1 pitch, breaking ball hits him. Just barely got a piece of him, but that's the second time that Van Voren has been hit. It's the third time he's been on base. And it brings up Jordan Boyer. Fly ball to center his last time. He's 0 for 3 on the day. Bulls will send the shortstop Bellow into the hole at deep short, edging toward third. And Santos, the second baseman, is edging toward the second base bag. A lot of room on the right side for Boyer. Runner goes, pitch is swung on and missed, and Van Horen has swiped another base. That's his second steal of the game, and Wichita State has the lead run in scoring position with one away. Why is it when it's a nervous game like this, when you have runners in scoring position, you're still nervous, and the other team, you're even more nervous. <laughs> it's just so tight right now. No balls, one strike on Boyer. And again, with a runner on second, Dietrich will come out, talk with Alvarez, and they will get the signals straight. I'm sure changing them up here now with a shocker on second base, able to look in and see what's being called. Saw Michael Kelly outside. He said it's all being set up for a walk-off victory, so just remember. Remember that, Jim. Three to three in the eighth. No balls, one strike on Boyer. Alvarez throws a fastball by him at 95. Swung on and missed 0-2. That was up in Boyer's eyes, and he had no chance of catching up with that one. No balls, two strikes. Van Voren at second, one away, three to three in the eighth. Loser leaves town. Last day of the regular season. 0-2 pitch from Alvarez. Pop foul right side. We can expect to see their closer, their fastball hurler, Mitchell Wallers. Walter C is out there throwing, and I would just be surprised, whatever the score is, if it's not him. No balls, two strikes on Boyer. Three for 12 in the series. Van Voren edges off of second. Santos trying to creep in and keep him close. 0-2 pitch. Took a little off it. Line foul down the third baseline. And it'll stay 0-2 on Boyer. Winner of this game will play the second game in Clearwater on Tuesday. 
So start time would depend on the first game, but chances are in that 12 noon to maybe 1 p.m. start range. Advanced weather for Clearwater looks pretty good next week. Another 0 2 from Alvarez is outside. One ball, two strikes. Bulls have not missed a conference tournament since 2011. They were in the Big East back then. And that was a strange one because they had a dramatic win the last game. Thought they were in and found out only after the fact that because of other games going on, they did not make the field. Oof. One ball, two strikes. Breaking ball in the dirt, two and two. I want to say that was the first year of this facility. I think it was the year that this stadium opened. Was Clearwater the host that year? It was. Oh, yes. It has been for many years. They moved it up to Brooklyn one year. It was in the home of the Brooklyn Cyclones Class A ball club one year right near Coney Island. But other than that, even dating back to Big East days, been a long run in Clearwater for the conference tournament. 2-2 from Alvarez. Pop foul right side. Bulls bullpen is quiet. They're going to let Nelson Alvarez do his thing for as long as he can do it. Walters continues to throw in the Wichita State bullpen. There's one out in the inning, a runner at second. 3-3 three to three in the top of the eighth. Alvarez just pitched once that last weekend. It was 31 pitches. Two balls, two strikes. Checks the runner at second. Now comes to the plate. Line drive center field. Phillips on the run, makes the catch. Whew. Coming in and toward left field. That ball was hit sharply by Boyer, but he is out number two and no chance for Van Voren to advance. Well, the pattern of the inning where they got their three was out one, Van Voren hit by a pitch, fly out to center, and then this guy with an RBI single, but it's not going to happen, at least in this case, as they intentionally walk really. So Luke Ritter draws the intentional walk. That places runners on first and second with two away. And it brings up Mason O'Brien, who's one for three, his two-run homer in the sixth, which was a no-doubter, tied this game. His fourth home run of the year. He is two for nine in the series. Left-handed batter against the righty Alvarez with two on and two out. First pitch in the dirt. Boy, short hopped by Dietrich. A terrific stop. The runners hold one and oh. Feeling a lot better about this situation if we get out of this inning because this is the tough part of their lineup. They have Wallace on deck. After Wallace, the power and the batting averages do drop off a little bit for Wichita State. Not to say there aren't dangerous hitters there, but you're dealing with the heavyweights right now. One ball, no strikes to O'Brien. And the dirt goes to the screen, and the runners will move up. It's 2-0, Van Voren at third, and Ritter at second. So the pressure increases, two balls, no strikes on O'Brien. Well, clearly the approach was to not give this fastball hitter anything like that, so change up, and I think they're going to go ahead and walk O'Brien now. Yeah, might as well keep the force in place, so O'Brien draws the intentional walk. That loads the bases, and it brings up Paxton Wallace, who's 0 for 3 today, 1 for 10 in the series, but the one hit was a grand slam on Thursday night. He has nine home runs and 34 driven in on the season. Billy Mole out to talk to Alvarez here in a critical situation with the bases loaded and two outs. Kind of mirrors what happened in the 3-2 game, the win against UConn, where they intentionally walked to load the bases. A decent right-handed power hitter came up, and Kyler Fedko, and he fell behind two and one. That's the last thing you want to do here is chance of walk obviously now in a tie game so I'm sure Billy Mole said hey trust your stuff fastball and even if he hits it 
one of our center, one of our outfielders will be able to get to. Well, here's Wallace with the bases loaded, two away, and a three-to-three three game in the top of the eighth. Alvarez comes set to look at the runners. Now he comes to the plate with a first pitch to Wallace. Pop foul, right side out of play, 0-1. So Alvarez gets ahead here in this critical at-bat. Must be said, Wallace had the slam the other night, had a slam against UConn, bases loaded. You could just tell he is ready to unload on a fastball. I would be surprised if Alvarez doesn't break out the change here. He's got to have better control of it. Can't throw it in the dirt. No balls, one strike. Fastball fouled off right side, and Alvarez is now ahead, 0-2. So again, your tendency here is to try to make him chase, but you do not want to put the pressure on Tyler Dietrich. One gets through here, and you're probably behind. No balls, two strikes on Paxton Wallace. Alvarez at the belt. Here's the pitch. Fastball outside, one and two. That's a good spot. Don't chance it low. Don't chance it getting away. So one and two. Wallace has struck out 49 times this season. One ball, two strikes, two outs, bases loaded, three to three in the top of the eighth. Here's the pitch from Alvarez. Swung on and missed, strike three. The inning is over and the Bulls get out of trouble. No runs, no hits, no errors, and three left on base for Wichita State. We head to the bottom of the eighth, tied at three on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. Dang. Bill Lindemann. Wow. That must mean what's his name doesn't have many pitches in him. Right. Although they've had him throwing in the pen for long enough. Three to three as we go to the bottom of the eighth, get all the latest USF clothing and gifts featuring the complete line of Adidas coaches gear. The USF bookstore is open seven days a week on the USF campus. You can also shop online 24 seven at www.usouthfloridabookstore.com. Cortez Bordrado and Dietrich. And it's still Jacob Lindemann on the mound. We can only assume that Mitchell Walters has a limited amount of pitches because yeah. they haven't gone to him yet, although heaven knows they've had him throwing for long enough in the bullpen. He continues to throw now, but they stay with the youngster Lindemann, and Cortez steps in. First pitch off speed for a strike. Cortez is officially one for two. He has walked, singled, and reached on an error, and he has driven in a run. Again, Lindemann had thrown a grand total of nine and one-third innings all year long prior to today. Came in and threw a scoreless seventh. There's a strike on the corner, 0-2. Walked one and struck out two in that inning. Eleven pitches and seven of them were for strikes, and he's quickly ahead of Cortez here, 0-2. Two to nothing last night for the Bulls. Three to three here. And seven to six Wichita State in the opener 
on Thursday. So we've had nothing but nail biters this weekend. <laughs> Cortez steps out. Walters, 21 pitches the other night. So, yeah, maybe they think he can't go a full two. He might come in at some point in this inning, though. No balls, two strikes. Fouled off to the right. Well, ideally for either one of these teams, before you go to Walters for Wichita State or before you go to Alvarez for USF, you'd rather be ahead. But sometimes you just don't have that luxury, especially when the stakes are this high. Correct. No balls, two strikes on Cortez, leading off the bottom of the eighth for the Bulls. That's high and inside, one and two. It's his 15th pitch. He's not thrown more than 24 in a game. So again, this is probably, if we're guessing, a temporary situation. Well, there's no righty lefty factor because Walters is a right-hander, as is Lindemann. Left-handed batter and Bedrado in the on-deck circle, one and two to Cortez. Called strike three, one down. That is the ninth strikeout for Wichita State pitching, and that'll bring up Austin Bedrado, who has struck out, grounded into a double play, and was awarded an intentional walk. So he is 0 for 2 officially. One out and the base is empty. Ninth inning for Wichita State is going to be 5 6 7. Slavens, Kadena, and Segrist. They are a combined 1 for 9 today. First pitch strike to Bedrado, 0 and 1. That's why you, you might be feeling pretty good if the Bulls could just push one yes. across here and head into that ninth inning with Alvarez on the mound and the lower part of the order for Wichita State at the plate. No balls, one strike on Bedrado, called strike two. Boy, the Bulls are just not seeing this guy. A lot of takes on strikes, some check swings, and just a lot of indications that they're having a hard time reading them. Not wanting to swing his curveball and it's his best pitch. So someone's going to have to hit it. No balls, two strikes, one out, base is empty. Lindemann comes set, swung on and missed. That's it for Bedrado, two down. Fastball out of the strike zone, up and in. That'll bring up Tyler Dietrich. Single hit by pitch and strike out. He's one for two. The other thing from Wichita's perspective is, you know, projecting maybe it goes extra innings, saving Walters while the Bulls will have to burn Alvarez. So that's another reason why I think Lindemann, because he's pitching so well, is still in the game. Alvarez has already thrown two innings for the Bulls. That one misses inside. It's 1-0 and to Dietrich. Dietrich has four hits in the series, one of them today. Two outs, base is empty. Three to three in the bottom of the eighth. Winner goes to Clearwater, loser goes home. The 1 0 pitch swung on and missed behind the fastball at 91. And it's one ball, one strike. Lindemann has now struck out the last three men he has faced. In with six and nine and in the third innings. And four strikeouts of the five men he has faced since he came on to be the fifth pitcher of the day. Swung on and missed, one and two. Too bad the game doesn't play out on paper. Bulls will be ahead for sure right now. Well, they only got two thirds of an inning out of their starter, did Wichita State. Bullpen has been pretty good. Kept them in the game, gave them the opportunity to come back and tie it, and that's where we are right now. One ball, two strikes on Dietrich. Fastball outside, two and two. <laughs> I notice that Wichita State fans have a thing that they take to say in strike three no matter what. They're generally disappointed when it doesn't happen. That was close though. Two outs, base is empty, two and two on Tyler Dietrich. Lindemann taking some time, gets the sign. 
Dietrich decides to hang in instead of stepping out. Then he swings and misses. Strike three. The inning is over. Jacob Lindemann strikes out the side, and we're going to the ninth. It's 3-3 three to three on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. So he had six strikeouts coming in. He's got five. Yep. <laughs> Jeez. They're sticking with Santos, too. We go to the ninth, tied at three. The Bulls in Wichita State. It'll be Brady Slavens, Ross Cadena, and Jack Segrist for Wichita State against Nelson Alvarez, who has thrown two innings, no runs, no hits, two walks, four strikeouts. One of the challenges with Alvarez, especially if he's not in a straight save situation, is that he is a guy by his nature that will have to throw a lot of pitches. He gets a lot of strikeouts, so that moves the pitch count up. He goes deep in counts. He does have a propensity to give up a walk or a hit by pitch. And to see him at 34 pitches through two innings is not unusual. But if this game does go to extras and it goes on for a while, you wonder how long they can go with him before they would have to go to the bullpen. Right now, the bullpen is quiet. You know, last weekend when he got the save, it was the first game of a doubleheader. I thought another close game. They're going to bring him in to get the save, even if it's just for an out or two or an inning. And Instead, Billy Moe went with Dylan Burns for the last two, and he got his first save. And I'm telling you, Burns is that other arm that I can guarantee you they have confidence in if it is required for extra innings. Well, there's no sense saving anybody. If they win, they'll still have 48 hours between games. But if they don't win and they didn't use somebody they thought could help them today, they'll regret it. So. Right. Going to use every card in the deck. Here is Brady Slavens to lead it off. First pitch high, 1 0. Slavens struck out his last time. He's 0 for 3 on the day. Bulls in the bottom of the ninth will have Bello, Phillips, and Sullivan 9 1 and 2. Hoping to get to that point with a tie game. There's a strike from Alvarez, 1 and 1. Surely setting it up for a senior to have a walk-off hit in the bottom of the ninth. That's the only reason a guy who has six strikeouts all year for Wichita just struck out five in two innings. Brady Slavens is 0 for 9 in the series. He has driven in 20. Pitch outside 2 and 1. He did pick up an RBI in one of the earlier games. Two balls, one strike. Alec Wisely for the first six. Nelson Alv Alvarez for two plus since then. 2 1 pitch. On the outside corner, 2 and 2, 94 on that one. Alvarez pretty much is in control of the situation because they haven't really been able to catch anything up to him as far as across the plate. So it's up to him to keep it there. Bulls pitchers have struck out six, four of them by Alvarez. Here is the 2-2. Two -two. Up high, and it's full, three and two. Last thing you want to do is start with a walk. The Bulls stranded three Wichita State base runners in the eighth. Shockers have only stranded four for the game. All but one of them came last inning. 3-2 pitch from Alvarez. Ball four. Lead run on first with nobody out in the ninth. 
third walk allowed by Alvarez. That'll bring up Ross Cadena, 0 for 3 on the day, 2 for 11 in the series. And if he is swinging away, I will be one surprised guy. I would think they're going to try to move Slavens up to second here. No, I'm sorry, one sacrifice bun all year. Again, if you haven't heard it, Shockers, that's just not their game. Four all season until this weekend, but two. They are clearly trying to get it done here again. Squaring early, and he bunts it to Alvarez. Might have a shot at second, but he's going to go to first for the sure thing. So it's a successful sacrifice going one to three, and Slavens moves up. That ball was bunted pretty hard. It got to Alvarez quickly, but boy, that is a roll of the dice if you try mm -hmm. to get the lead guy at second and don't get anybody, you're really in hot water. So the Bulls take the out. And now that brings up Jack Segrist, who is one for three. He's singled in the third. We're going to have a pinch runner now for Slavens. Adam Stevenson, a reserve pitcher. And he will make his second base running appearance of the season, both in this series. So it's Stevenson at second now. And they'll need a new left fielder in the bottom of the ninth. A little surprised they don't go to the lefty Jackson here on a pinch hit. Segrist a couple of fly balls his last two times up, singled in his first at bat in the third. Pitches outside 1-0. and oh. One out in the inning. Stevenson, the pinch runner at second. It is three to 3-3 three in the ninth. Chances are Jackson is going to get in the game somehow because he's jogging down to the bullpen and he's not a pitcher. He's going to get his arm loose to come in for defense, I would imagine. Pitch is high. Two balls, no strikes. Now the Bulls do have first base open. They are in the seven spot right now with Segrist. Katzfee, the number eight hitter, is hitless on the day, but Van Voren, the number nine hitter, Hasn't been retired yet today by the Bulls. 2-0 pitch. Nope, steps out first. Alvarez had already started his motion. Two balls, no strikes on Segrist. 3-3 three to three in the top of the ninth. Stevenson with a pretty good lead off of second. Santos keeping him close. Here's the 2-0. That is low. Three balls, no strikes. Alvarez has already walked one in the inning. He's walked three today, but remember the first two were intentional in the eighth. Right. But he's in danger right now. 3-0 to Segrist. Pitch number 45. Alvarez checks the runner at second. The 3-0 pitch is ball four. So two walks in the inning. Runners at first and second with one away. There's no activity in the Bulls' bullpen. Jacob Katzfee now is grounded out twice and struck out. He's 0 for 3. Two guys that, by rights, can't touch Alvarez's stuff, but clearly he's not trying to throw balls right now. If he can get it back, Bulls will be fine, at least in this inning. Katzfee, one for 11 in the series. Left-handed batter against the righty Alvarez with runners on first and second and one out. Outside, one and oh. And the Bulls are digging themselves a hole here in a tie game in the ninth, two on, one out. A couple of walks and a sacrifice sandwiched in between. One ball, no strikes on Cat's feet. Alvarez winds and deals, and there's a strike at the belt, one and one. Cat's feet, a left-handed batter. Junior out of Lee's Summit, Missouri. This 
listed as an outfielder and first baseman. He has played center field throughout the series. One ball, one strike. Outside, two and one. Crowd wanted it, but I think I have to agree with the home plate umpire there, just missed. Alvarez approaching 50 pitches. Two balls, one strike on Cat's feet. Wonder what happens if he walks this guy. This really won't make a move. I don't think he's got anybody ready. Two balls, one strike. They're just now starting to stir out there. Outside, three and one. Looks like a right-hander is getting ready now. Oh, it's Burns. Yep. Three balls, one strike on Cat's fee. Runners on first and second, one away. Lefty on deck. Jackson, Yeager's been warming as a lefty for the Bulls. Alvarez trying to get Cat's fee here with two on and one away. Comes set, and here is the 3 1 pitch. Called strike at the knees. Count is full, three and two. It looks easy when it's right down the middle. Obviously, it's not easy. There's nerves, there's everything going on, but if he can summon what he just summoned here, it's gonna be strike, it's gonna be a strikeout. The runners, Stevenson, the pinch runner at second, Segrist at first, one out in the inning, three to three in the ninth. And three balls, two strikes on Jacob Katzfee, the Wichita State center fielder. Alvarez ready to go. The 3-2 is bounced out to deep short. Bellow with a long throw to first, not in time. Everybody's safe, bases loaded. Infield hit for Katzfee. Just in the right spot, or if you're the Bulls, the wrong spot, Bellow. I'm sure off the bat thought at least try and get the lead runner, but that wasn't there. Made the right decision. Yeah, I think he had no other play other than to go to first, and unfortunately his momentum was carrying him the other way. We'll have a pinch hitter now for Van Voren. Alex Jackson, a left-handed bat, will come up with the bases loaded and one away. Really speedy, so any ground ball you got to come home with, you're not going to turn two in all likelihood. There is one out in the inning. And Jackson to the plate. Hitting 220 on the season with no homers and 12 driven in. The Bulls infield is in. They're going to come home with any ground ball. Base is loaded, one out. First pitch strike on the outside corner. Wichita State left the bases loaded in the eighth. Can the Bulls make them do it again in the ninth? <laughs> Let's hope so. One out in the inning, three to three the score. No balls, one strike on pinch hitter Alex Jackson. Alvarez, the pitch, it's outside. That's where he is missed pretty consistently. It's one and one. Narrowly missing, but consistently on that outside part. One ball, one strike on Jackson. 53 pitches now for Alvarez. Bases loaded, one out. Top of the ninth. One ball, one strike. Long drive, but well foul to right field, and it's one and two. If you're listening and you're wondering, you know, he's doing 50-something pitches. Why not go to the pen? He is their best bullpen arm, and he is going to get drafted. Uh, you're not saving him for anything if you're the Bulls. Well, again, you're doing anything you can to keep playing. I would guess he wouldn't pitch to the 10th, but just get out of the ninth first. One ball, two strikes, a strikeout here, and the Bulls could move the infield back. One out in the inning. The one-two to Jackson took a little off it, and it's low, two and two. Not a bad idea, but again, he's been missing with that change low lately. 
Bases are loaded with one out. Two balls, two strikes on Jackson. Top of the order and Jordan Boyer waiting on deck. Jackson gets set. He's back in the batter's box. Alvarez is ready to go. Here is the 2-2 two -two and it's in the dirt and it's three and two. Well, now you got to come in with one. A walk puts the Bulls behind. Little surprise he went to the change there. He's having issues with it. Three balls, two strikes on Jackson. Jackson has walked eight times in 109 plate appearances this season. Alvarez trying to get out of a big jam. Here is the 3-2 pitch. Bouncing ball, Janort spears it. He comes home and he throws and he's safe. Dietrich was pulled off a home plate, Bulls trail. Janord made a terrific play on a high bouncer, made the right play to come home. He had time, but his throw pulled Dietrich off the bag, and the Bulls are behind in the ninth. Yeah, it was not an easy throw to make. He had to rush it. I don't even know if Dietrich actually held on to the ball. I think he bobbled it momentarily. So it's 4-3. to three. The bases are still loaded, and there's still one out. We'll see how the official scorer sorts that one out, but now Jordan Boyer to the plate, he's 0 for 4, and now the Bulls are gonna need at least a run in the bottom of the inning. Boyer fly ball to center each of his last two at-bats. Bulls infield is still in. First pitch strike on the inside corner. Four to three, Wichita State in the ninth. It's just a shame. Game's not over yet. We've been talking about setting up for a walk-off. Now it really has to happen, but nothing out of the infield in this inning. Two walks, infield hit, and that play. Fielder's choice and a throwing error on Janord. No balls, one strike. Pop foul right side, and it's 0-2. So the first lead of the day for Wichita State. They have scored four unanswered since the Bulls went up three to nothing in the bottom of the fifth. No balls, two strikes on Boyer. The pitch from Alvarez. Popped up right side foul territory. Janord and Dietrich will chase, but that's going to be in the seats. Count will stay 0 and 2. Alvarez two and a third, one hit, one run, unearned, four walks, four strikeouts. This will be his 60th pitch. his control back at least. No balls, two strikes. Swung on and missed on a breaking ball, two outs. So that will move the infield back for the Bulls. Bases remain loaded. Fifth strikeout for Alvarez and now Luke Ritter, who is one for three with a run scored. The Bulls walked him intentionally in his last at-bat in the eighth. And now they've had him shifted all series, but you can't do that in this situation because you're, if you're Wichita going, just, just hit it the other way. They're giving us a run, so the Bulls aren't doing that. Two outs, bases loaded, four to three. Wichita stayed in the ninth. Alvarez getting set. He is almost catching Alec wisely in number of pitches <laughs> thrown. Change up is over for a strike, 0-1. You know, the interesting thing, as good as, as well as Lindemann has pitched, I think if it's tied, they stick with him. The Bulls might actually, I know, 
stretching. Benefit from a, a harder throwing arm because you know they're bringing in their closer now. Well, they got to keep it at one run oh, yeah. here. This no is doubt. a critical moment here for the Bulls. 0 1 pitch. Bouncing ball inside the line at third and into the corner, and this is going to clear the bases. A three run double for Luke Ritter, and the Bulls trail 7 to 3. Clutch hit. Just, just snuck past Sullivan. He did all he could. Hit the perfect part. And now the Bulls are in trouble. Ritter is now driven in four in the game, 37 on the season. And Billy Mole is coming out to get Nelson Alvarez. So the Bulls are going to need a big bottom of the ninth. But they've got to get this last out, first of all, in the top of the inning. We go to break with Wichita State leading 7-3 on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. Left-hander Noah Yeager will come in for the Bulls, making his 10th appearance, eighth time out of the bullpen. Two and two, 3.82 earned run average. He's worked 30 innings, allowed 13 runs, 28 hits, 11 walks, and 22 strikeouts. He will inherit a two-out situation with a runner on second base. Nelson Alvarez, two and two-thirds, four runs, three earned, two hits, four walks, five strikeouts, 62 pitches, 37 for strikes. And now Jaeger will try to keep this a four-run game. And the Bulls, regardless, will have a lot of work to do in the bottom of the ninth. And we talked about how teams will do anything they can to get a team that's not even attempted many bunts this year just to get the one run and what can happen and on the Bulls end they're trying to do anything they can by having their closer out there for a third inning and he just lost his command and all those walks came home to roost. Yeah when you look at the runs scored two of them got on via a walk one by a fielder's choice by pitch scored in the sixth inning. That was, that was really when Wichita got back into the game. That blast by Mason O'Brien, the three runs with two outs. And in the end, you take your chances when it gets tied late, but in the sixth is when really Wichita won this game, if they win. They have scored seven unanswered runs. Here's O'Brien, who was walked intentionally his last time. He lines it to second. It is dropped there by Santos, but he picks it up, makes the play, and the inning is over. Four runs for Wichita State. They do it on just two hits, no errors, and one left on base. We go to the bottom of the ninth with the Bulls trailing 7-3 to three on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. I'd be surprised if Lindemann doesn't stay in. Uh, they're playing for Tuesday now. Huh. They're bringing in Walters. The best Still Jackson's play. playing left. Yeah. I've lost my internet again, so I don't have stats. Let's see what we got here. So Jackson hit for the right fielder, but he's going to play left field. stuff back anyways. Okay. Okay. 
Hines, who's still in 13s and right. So 13 is Gibson. He's the guy that's been right fielder the first two games. Couple of changes for Wichita State. First of all, in right field, Hunter Gibson has entered the game. Remember, Van Voren was lifted for a pinch hitter. And Mitchell Walters will come in to try to save it. Walters picked up his eighth save of the season on Thursday night. He's two and three, a 4.13 earned run average. And he will face Bello, Phillips, and Sullivan here with the Bulls needing four to keep their season alive. Bello is 0 for 2 with a sacrifice. Now the Bulls trying to have a miracle rally here to continue their season, but they're going to need... Four to tie, five to win. Here's Bello to lead it off. First pitch high, one and oh. They're into storylines. Seniors, Janord and Chatfield being the two valued members would hit fourth and fifth in the inning. Got a score, five to win. Need base runners, one oh pitch. Missed down low, two and oh. So Bello's gotta be patient here. He has got to get on base at the table here. Take, take. Two balls, no strikes. Walters looked very sharp against the Bulls on Thursday night. That's high 3-0, but his overall record this year, not that impressive, a 4.13 ERA. He's walked 15 in 32 innings, but he has also struck out 42. He's a right-hander. And he's behind Bellow now 3-0. and Taking all the way, and that's ball four. So that's a great start for the Bulls. Bellow aboard, and he will no doubt be very cautious on the base paths. Just go station to station here because the Bulls need four. Here is Kyle Phillips. He was hit by a pitch his last time. He's 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. ZRA was at 2-4. Basically two bad outings in a row. Jumped at 4.5. That was four runs allowed against Cincy and three against UConn. That's kind of what the Bulls need here. Both were in one inning. So it's happened recently to him. Both late April, early May. Here's Phillips now with nobody out and a runner on first. First pitch high, 1-0, and oh, and they do have a right-hander up and throwing in the bullpen. Wouldn't be surprised if it's Clayton McGinnis. McGinnis was the Thursday night starter, went seven innings. It's Miller Plyman, freshman. Plyman we saw in game two. One ball, no strikes on Phillips, five in a row out of the strike zone so far by Walters. That one is over, 1-1. One and one. Seven to three, Wichita State in the bottom of the ninth. Bulls have their leadoff man on with nobody out. Phillips trying to stay patient here. Goes after the pitch and skies it to shallow left field. Catch made, one away. I think that's Jackson out there now. Slavens was taken out for the pinch runner. And Gibson's in right field now for Van Horn. He was the guy that Jackson pinch hit for. So one out in the Bulls' ninth. And that'll bring up Jake Sullivan, who sacrificed his last time. He's one for three. Bulls with two more outs to work with here, trailing seven to three in the bottom of the ninth. This is the big at bat right here. If he gets on, then it's on. If not, it's gonna have three or four, two, at, two out hits in a row. First pitch high, one and oh. Bello led it off with a walk, but then a fly out to center field followed that. Bulls trying to make it to the conference tournament in Clearwater. They haven't missed since 2011. 
One ball, no strikes. Bouncing ball toward third. They go to second for one, and that's all they'll get, but there's two away. Sullivan safe on a fielder's choice. Bello forced at second. And that'll bring up Jordan Santos, who's one for three with a walk and a couple of RBI and a double in the fifth. Santos hit in the fifth, gave the Bulls a three to nothing lead, but they have not been able to put anything together since then. And that could end up being the story, Jim. This was the day where the pitching lined up for the Bulls' favor and uh, assortment of Guys who did a great job for Wichita, but if we're in and out of trouble, the Bulls can never come up with that solution. Bulls have stranded eight on base. Except for this man right here, the one big hit. First pitch to Santos, breaking ball strike, 0 and 1. Bulls right at 500 now, 26 and 26, but in danger of. Dropping underneath that on what may be their final game of the season. No balls, one strike. Soft little line drive, one hopper to short. They toss to second, and that's how things end. And the Bulls are eliminated from the conference tournament by Wichita State. The Shockers win it 7-3. to three. They will go on to Clearwater. Bulls fall and finish. 26 and 27 on the season. Stay with us, post game show coming up on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. gets the win. Is that Marley? Lindemann, right? Lindemann. Yeah, I guess it would have to be Lindemann because that's when the tie was broken. You're right. Yeah, well. Did the job. First win. Six strikeouts coming into the day. Well, the season comes to a close today as the Bulls fall 7-3. to three. Wichita State, seven runs, six hits, one error. USF, three runs, four hits, and one error. The winning pitcher is Jacob Lindemann. He is 1-0. and oh. The loser is Nelson Alvarez, 4-3. and three. The save goes to Mitchell Walters, his ninth. There was one home run, Mason O'Brien, his fourth of the season. Wichita State goes to 26 and 29 on the season, 9 and 15 in the American. They will be the eighth seed in the conference tournament. The Bulls finish with a record of 26 and 27, 8 and 16 in conference play. Stay with us back to wrap it up for the season after this. Final scores 7 to 3, Wichita State on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. My uh, schedule just slowed down significantly. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm going to work on all those uh, archive room shows now with all that football reunion sound. Yeah, probably going to cut it down to three shows a week starting now. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. 